us. But they are who we thought they were. And we let them off the hook. I'm a man. I'm 40. I'm not a kid. That's not true. So get your facts straight. What else do you want to know? Playoffs? We'll talk about playoffs? You kidding me? Playoffs? We couldn't do diddly poo offensively. I'm totally embarrassed and totally ashamed. We suck. We talking about practice. If you call me Chris Everett to my face one more time. Chris. What's my opinion of Kinger's performance? What the f*** do you think is my opinion of it? This is the Dan Duckett Show on 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Hey, good afternoon. I would have been at Colts camp today, but I ain't going to lie to you, man. I was sitting there and getting eat up by gnats, and I got to do a little something-something for a for a sponsor coming up here right after, so it worked out better. But I got to tell you, I like being at Colts camp. J.D. Shadrick is going to join us from Jaguars.com. Gus Bradley is going to join us, a new defensive coordinator, Jason Benetti. As Jimmy and I are wearing, well, today we're wearing Benetti. Now we are. It's Benetti Day. All right, let me ask you a question. I, I need to hear from you football guys today. Jimmy, we're men in the phones today. I got to hear from football guy. Why in the hell is the punter running sprints? Serious business. Why is the punter running gassers? Uh, tell me, and I, 317-239-1070, I'll give you the options. Well, Dan, he's part of the team. Team's running sprints. He got to be running sprints. Okay, fine. No, he's a freaking punter. Hey. Reggie Jones says, if the punter tears an Achilles running, I'm scared to pee at 4 a.m. That's exactly right, Reginald. That's exactly right, Reginald T. Jones. The T stands for terrific. That's right. I got a thing here because we bought a sleep number bed, right? I got a thing here that tells you when I get up to go to the potty at night. And as you all know, because I share my life with you, it's a lot. And last night, because of the nets and everything else, you know what I had to do? I had to take a damn, uh, what? I had to take a Benadryl, whatever the hell that is. I don't even know. Lee's like, yeah, take a Benadryl. I go, what am I taking Benadryl for? Uh, You won't, uh, you know. I go, no, I don't know. You won't itch. I got up four times last night. Let's see what times. Looks like around 12, 15, 1, 15, 3 o'clock, and 4. Uh, 650 to go to the potty. I'm with you, Reginald. You got a world-class athlete that can't run some gassers without tearing an Achilles. What are we doing? Why is he running? Why are kickers and punters running? 317-239-1070. And I got crushed for that take. Like, I got absolutely crushed for that. Dawkins, you're so stupid. No wonder you couldn't coach basketball. No wonder. No wonder you suck, Dawkins. Yeah, okay, you're right. I sucked. You're right. I'm wrong. There you go. You're right. But answer me the question. Why is the punter out there running gassers? Somebody, anybody, tell me, please. Anybody? Bueller? Dawkins, he's part of the team. What do you want him to do? I want him and the kicker to go down the other end and punt. Go down there and punt. Go down there and kick. Go down there and do whatever. Seriously. Come on. I mean, man, and by the way, I got to have a huge thank you. Uh, This is awesome. Kelsey Anderson, uh, who is on WRTV, did a great piece on our bikes program. Fantastic. Thank you for that. You can go to A at K Anderson underscore WRTV. Or, of course, you know I'm going to have that thing out all the time because everything comes from donations by y'all. And we cannot thank you enough. I also have an article up, ladies and gentlemen, at Outkick where I, I learn about thankfulness. I learn about gratitude as I turn 60. I did. I learn about it, and I write about it, and if you get a chance, let me know what you think. It's on OutKick, and it's also on my Twitter handle. Yeah, I'm with you on this. I ain't messing around here. Indie sports fans, punters shouldn't run gassers. I don't know about if I agree with that. Might as well hit the quarterback live. Hey, Dan, if I'm a coach, I want my kickers to kick instead of running. Right, Don? 
I guess I could say the same thing about any position, but don't give me the crap about, well, you know he's on the team, Dockage. Dockage, you suck. No wonder IU didn't want you. He's on the team. Okay, he's on the team. All right. Well, he ain't on the team now because the official word came out as first reported on our show that he got hurt, and now the word is out, ladies and gentlemen. The word is out that Rodrigo Sanchez, Rigoberto Sanchez, excuse me, uh, has a torn Achilles, and he's done for the year. McAfee! McAfee! Where are you, McAfee? Pat, let's go. Connor, what do you got? Hey, why would he not be running sprints if he's part of the team? Because uh, guys that are coaches are part of the team. They ain't running sprints. Managers are part of the team. They ain't running sprints. Doctors are part of the team. They are all in the team picture. Why the hell would he run sprints? He's a punter. What happens when a guy's taking a house call and he's got to chase him down? What's a house call? Talk Take like talk like back. normal people. Don't talk like idiot guy trying to be cool. Talk like human being guy. What happens when he's running a touchdown back and Rigoberto's got to gotta run him down, make a tackle? Yeah, well, when's the last time that's happened? I don't know. Offhand. Right, I know. It hasn't happened because if you're worried about Rigoberto Sanchez running a guy down, then your team stinks. That's a fair point, Dan. I'll give you that. You got it, Connor. Appreciate you. Yeah, there's no good point. There's no good point on either side. And I knew what a house call meant. I just hate hip young white guys. Come on. Why are you running? Go punt. Right. Punters and kickers are like safeties. They run every play, sometimes have to tackle. That's all I got. I get you. So are you supposed to practice tackling too? Look, I get it. Did you see Pat McAfee knock down that guy? Good. That's one play. And I'm guessing, I got to ask, did McAfee ever, I mean, you guys all point to the kicker around this town, and it's great. It's great. Did you guys ever, ever, ever? Ever? Did McAfee ever run sprints? Don't run sprints if you're the punter or the kicker. Kick! Kick. But I understand it. I do. Like, what are you going to do? Like, if I'm the kicker, I'm Sanchez. What am I going to do? Stand on the sideline? No. No, I totally get it. No, I do. I, I seriously do. I do. I get it. And I understand it, but I don't like it. And now... Again, what do I always talk about? I always talk about an injury. Somehow, some way, there's a freaking injury, and I don't like it. Yeah, Josh, Joshua Ayers says, hey, what about a nice, nice soft jog? Right. Ten years in the Navy for Josh. Thank you for your service. Cancer survivor. New father. Yeah. You're the man, Josh. That's right. Now you got no punter. Now you got nothing. Man, oh, man. And the center has got COVID. Are we going to get mad at him? I mean, I don't know. Are the local, as a dying local paper, is it going to come out and say, well, how did he, he, is he vaxxed? Is he not vaxxed? Uh, Because, I mean, all the dying local paper and everybody else told me was that if you got vaxxed, you were good. You got back, you're good. No, he got COVID. Rip him. Send him to the airport. Yeah. Yeah. How about that? Ryan Kelly. Ryan Kelly. Oh, my God. He's got COVID. He needs to go to the airport. Cut him. Stop it. Stop it. Remember when they told you if you got vaxxed, you would not get COVID? That does not seem to be the, uh, I don't know does not seem to be accurate. It does not seem to have trended that way, but Ryan Kelly's got it, so he's out. Hey, good thing you got a couple weeks here, right? Good thing. But that's the big news. I mean, look, uh, Pat McAfee taught me the value of a punter when I said one time on this show, yeah, you know what? Uh, Colts don't have any playmakers. And he said, what are you talking about? He goes, if I flip the field 80 yards, is that a playmaker? And I go, yeah, it kind of is. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It kind of is. And Sanchez, whose first punt was awful, I text McAfee. I said, you got to get back here. His next punt was great. I text McAfee. He said, never mind. Um, Let's get McAfee back. Let's go. 
although he's building an empire, a, a great empire, so I, there's no reason for him to come back. But somebody got to come back. Where's a coal quit when you need him? Like, all I remember this is coal quits. Coal quit this. Coal quit that. Right? Coal quits. Chiefs great Dustin coal quit. There's a coal quit. How many coal quits? There's got to be one at Tech. They all went to Tennessee, I feel like. His brother, like I think it might be Brendan, but he punted for Denver for a really long time. Yeah. I think it's sure his dad was a punter. His dad was a punter. There's a Britain Cole quit. He's a punter. Craig Cole quit. Who was your guy? Dustin. Yeah. How many Cole quit brothers are there? I'm going to tell you right now. Dustin and uh, Britain. And then there is, uh, hang on, caller. Craig punted for the Steelers. Uh, hang on. Lester, Craig's father, punted at University of Alabama. Dustin, you mentioned. Yeah, I mean, what are we going to do? Get a cold quit on here. Jeez. Can't we find... <laughs> can't we find... They're like the Mannings of punting. They're like the... the I don't know. I mean, let's go. Golly. Find yourself a nice cold quit and let's go punt. Punter's a big deal in the NFL, I think. Remember, I never forget this. I was driving in a couple years ago. Lee and I went down to Nashville to watch the Colts night game. I think it was a Thursday night game, maybe. I don't know. But we're driving in and we're listening to the pregame show. Uh, Dave McGinnis, who comes on our show, I think he comes on John's show. He was a former assistant coach. They were doing the pregame show and they talked about their punter was hurt. They had tryouts, but they also knew this guy from Tennessee who lived close. So they called him up, said, hey, look, come on in for a tryout. So this guy comes in for a tryout, and this is a true story. He came in in his delivery garb, meaning if he was, I think he was a UPS guy, and he came to the gate of the complex in Nashville, and he was wearing his UPS stuff, and they let him in, and they said for two reasons. One, he was UPS, and two, they confirmed that he was getting a punting tryout. So he would lift close. He had been at Tennessee, I think, as a punter, or Vandy, one of the two, was a good punter. He ended up going like this. He ended up getting it blocked. T.J. Care, you remember that? Scored a touchdown. Now you got to find a kickoff guy. Now you got to find a holder on points after touchdown and field goals. Sanchez was pretty damn valuable. That's a big deal. How in the hell does a punter, how, tear an Achilles, Running down that freaking whatevers. Explain it to me, people. Explain it to me. I don't have the answer, but it ain't good. It ain't good at all. Has Ray Guy got any kids? I don't know. DeForest Buckner reached out to McAfee. It's open tryout time, Dan. Yeah. Let's go. Let's live stream it. God. Citizens of Indianapolis. Jimmy, you got, anything, the call. you got anything in that leg? No. Me neither. Tell you what, though, Jimmy, had I not fallen down those stairs before the party, that titanium in this right hip might have got me work. Damn it. (laughs) No, I feel bad, man. The dude's just, by all accounts, and I've seen him interview. I think we had him on the show once. Seems like a great dude, man. Uh, Robert M. on the YouTube chat says, Hey, Dan, all bets are off on the Colts Super Bowl run with the loss of the punter. El Presidente, I think you're giving him a little bit too much credit. Little bit. Danny's in the NFL, should be an elite athlete. How's he getting hurt? DD fell down the stairs before the party I did the day before, about 10 o'clock Friday. I was feeling good too, Jennifer. I was feeling good. Knee wasn't hurting. Fell down one stair, missed it, had a bunch of bags in my hand. I wrote an article about it. Go to outkick.com or go to my Twitter page. Pretty good article. Let me know what you think. I'm very appreciative of all the people in my life. Yeah. Hey, Dan, if Sanchez didn't run yesterday, Dan would say, why does a punter think he's better than everyone else and not working out? Now, that shows you how dumb you are, uh, MRC. That is never going to be said by me. I coach for a long time. I understand who's supposed to do what. And everybody ain't treated the same, Slicks. But that's all right. You you keep hating. Dustin Colquitt, Hunter Nizwander, Matt Hack, Michael Pilardi. Those are the guys that are available. You know what I'm going with, Jimmy? I'm going with the punter. 
That's it. Ah, uh, Colquitt. Hey, Dan, the punter should be in good shape. I'm in bad shape. Don't think I'm tearing Achilles running sprints. I may even go try it today. Uh, people are questioning whether I fell down before the party. I think I talked about it on the show. You gave me the greatest line ever. Nothing says old like breaking, falling down and breaking your fake hip. It, it definitely happened before the show. Jimmy, you can uh, you can verify that, right? The injury? Oh, yeah. 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 And I asked you multiple yeah. times after that, make sure you are right. Because yeah. it wasn't each, a, each I, comment I, afterward made it seem like whew, we're in dire straits. I, wasn't, I, I tell you what. Uh, still, I can't swing a golf club, and I got a big golf weekend with my boys coming in. We're still celebrating our birthdays, by the way. I'm telling you, we are. This is birthday palooza. My buddy Cam turned 60. So Cam, myself, my buddy Custer turned 60. Kevin Page turned 60. We all went to high school together, grade school in some cases. And uh, so, yeah, it's still going on. Big weekend at my house. Mike's flying in from Salt Lake City. KP's taking off his job as the CEO of... Uh, Wabash trucking. Yeah. What do you got? Dustin Colquitt punted in 11 games last year, six for the Falcons, five for the Browns. Uh, in the six games in Atlanta, he averaged about 47 yards per punt. In the uh, Cleveland stint, 41 and a half yards per punt. Yeah, let's long it. of 66, long of 56 in both those stints. I'm in. His name's Colquitt. He knows his way around it. Still got a boot. I was really disappointed when Kansas City cut him. They did it after the Super Bowl. They did it for cap reasons. He was making a ton of money. Still got a good leg by all accounts. Yeah, let's get him. Let's go. Let's go, Chris Ballard. Chief, Chiefs connection. Chris Ballard, Dustin Colquitt, right it's there. It's over. There you go. It, it, yeah, there you go. Hey, uh, one of the things that is sad today is Lenny, Di- Lenny Dawson died. Now, those of you that are old as me remember this. You remember Lenny Dawson, who led, led our uh, Gary Native, in fact, Hank Stram to Super Bowl four victory. That's right. Lenny Dawson was freaking awesome. Like he played 19 years in the NFL or in professional football. Uh, he then became a broadcaster and a good one. Like slaps like me are analysts. He was an analyst on NBC. He was also host of HBO's inside the NFL, but he also also went after practice to broadcast that's not that night's sports report. And he was a sports anchor. He was. He was a sports anchor. He played at Purdue. Um, he was from Alliance, Ohio, legendary in the state of Ohio. But Lenny Dawson was a, and by all accounts, a great dude. And frankly, I think I'm going to put up on our website my list of iconic pictures. You know, I talked about, and somebody actually sent to me the Oscar Robertson picture of him rebounding with his legs literally spread, ball between, right around his crotch. He looks like he's 20 feet in the air. The Indiana 1976, Woodson, or it's not Woodson, Woody couldn't play on that team. Uh, May and Buckner, Abernathy, Cruz, Radford, Benson, Wilkerson walking down, looked like the streets of New York. That's an iconic picture. Lenny Dawson sitting uh, in a fold-out chair at halftime of Super Bowl One with a fresca and a freaking heater. He's burning a heater. Is one of the most iconic pictures of all time, but Lenny Dawson was way more than that. Married his childhood sweetheart. She passed away years ago. But long story short, man, that dude had it figured out. He was a great quarterback. And as I said, understood getting into broadcasting really before anybody else did. And uh, that, awesome. Absolutely awesome. Good. Uh, uh, rest in peace, Lenny Dawson. 87 years old. Purdue fans that are old enough or Purdue fans in general, man, uh, I'm thinking about you because I know that he was, he was an all-time great. Uh, my friend Jordan Jolivet chimes in. He says, Dan, I kicked the 42-yard field goal with you holding for me at Memorial Stadium. You told me it would have been blocked, and my self-esteem never recovered. Jordan, here's the deal with that, though. Uh, I know your leg. I know what's going on with that leg. And that leg and your self-esteem, all you got to do, I think I'm going to send you Chris Ballard's number Give him a call. Get a tryout because I've seen that leg. I saw that leg get banged up. I did. I saw that leg get banged up. 
tore his ACL playing basketball. And, uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, we do. You're welcome, Terry uh, Terry Debt. Nice job. Kelsey Anderson did a great job. Doc, it cycles for the city, man. Uh, she did a great, great job highlighting our program. She came out to our house. She's a gal that went to Mount Vernon. Really nice. Uh, really fun to talk to. And, yeah, she put it out. And hopefully that leads to more donations. And, again, I keep saying it. But we're going to get uh, another batch of bikes out sooner than later. So there you go. It's hump day today, baby. J.P. Shadrick, Jaguars.com. We're going to talk about them. Gus Bradley, former coach of the Jaguars. Gus Bradley, defense coordinator coach, going to join us. It's Bonetti Day. It's Bonetti Day. Jason Bonetti, we have his shirt on, Jimmy and I, as well. We're going to go behind enemy lines. I'm anxious to hear what people think, particularly guys that work for the Jaguars. What are they thinking about where the Jags are right now? The Jags. Uh, Dan, someone just said they thought they were supposed to be an elite athlete. Is he saying Dominique Wilkins is an elite, isn't an elite athlete? Matt, relax, dog. I mean, I know you get mad at everything. I know you're upset all the time, Matt, but just relax, baby. It's, it's you know, just chill out, dog. We'll have a good time here today. Promise you, you will. Uh, what else we got? We got a bunch. But anyway, long story short, there was a swatting incident at a state at a representative's. What does that mean? Swatting. A call was determined to be a false call. Swatting. Something that happens to politicians. I had a bag of penises sent to my house. I should have turned that in. All right. Uh, again, thanks, Kelsey Anderson. Great stuff. You can see it on our TV. It was on this morning. Let's go real quick. Paul, what do you got? Dan, how you doing? Good, Paul. Uh, first off, um, you said, why would the uh, punter be running? The punter shouldn't have been running, but I'm guaranteeing you, Dan, the reason why he was running was because he's like, I'm one of the boys. I know. Running, I'm going to run. I know. Uh, secondly, Coach, you're right, are going to win at least 12 games this year, and that's at the minimum. Also, I wonder how mad Jimmy gets every time he sees Jonathan Taylor out there doing his thing because the Chiefs could have had Jonathan Taylor, <laughs> but they traded up and took Clyde Edwards Hilaire mm-hmm. instead of taking Jonathan Taylor. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering mm-hmm. how Jimmy looks at Jonathan mm-hmm. Taylor and says, Man, how that would have looked with that speed Kansas City had. That's all I got. Yeah, Dave. hang on. Let's get Jimmy. Business. Hold on. Right. Hold on, Paul. Let's get his response, okay? So, two all things. Right. One, I-, I love Jonathan Taylor, and i not mad. I don't have sour grapes with it. However, I, w- I do have buyer's remorse because Clyde has not been what Kansas City thought he was going to be. They thought he was going to be as dynamic as he was in LSU. They wanted a dual threat back that could be a pass catching back and a running back at the same time. Not a Taylor can't do that. Hey, Paul. But I'm not sour grapes. Hey, I'm not bitter. What's I'm not bitter. Paul, Paul, first What's off, up, he said something, and then he replaced but with however. So whenever he said about no sour grapes, when he went to however, that eliminated the previous. Sour grapes. Yeah, yeah, that was sour grapes. <laughs> and then the second thing is, you know, Paul, one of the great things about me is I'm not very smart, so I don't overthink things very often. Listen to what Jimmy, how he the Chiefs wanted a dual back threat that could catch blah, 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 blah. They did, and Mahomes asked for it. And how about just this? How about getting the best player, and it seems like Jonathan Taylor's the best player, Paul. Would you agree? In hindsight, sure. Oh, you could do that with the draft all the time. You can no, throw hindsight not, glasses. No, no, hey, sure. Paul, not, sure. that, not that big a difference, sure. Paul. You're talking Jonathan about a guy that's... The there you go. Out of there you go. There you go. We got the best GM ever, Paul. Chiefs, well, Chiefs have underachieved. I'm not going to go that far, dude. <laughs> but what? What do you want, punter? He gets in here before we take. Uh, give me a cold quit. There's got to be a. What'd you say, Dustin? Right, Jimmy? Yep, Dustin. Yeah. Cold quit. Yep. You got 12 wins. I, I, I got 13 wins. That a baby. I'm with you, man. The finally, somebody of intelligence has called into this show because everybody, including everybody around here, is just ripping me for going 12 to 13. Paul, you're the best. Appreciate you, my friend. Have a good one, Dan. Uh, you too. Yeah, Jimmy. Oh, you can go hindsight. Hey, I'll tell you this. Yeah, I don't know whether he's a dual threat or not, but he did have 40 catches, Jonathan Taylor, and I would anticipate. I don't know, but that's only going to go up, I hope. Like, my thing with the Colts is just get the balls to the good players. 
I mean, seems to be what nah, just makes sense to me. Get the ball to your best players. And a uh, 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 little hint here, one of your best players is Naheem Hines. Uh, why was the punter running, Jimmy? Because you wanted to be one of the boys? I guess. Or it's just yeah. what you do when the coach says I mean, get on the line, you get on the line. I would personally, I think it's 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 want to be a part of the team. I would be upset if the coach was like, "All right, everybody on the line." But the punter. Except you, Jimmy. Yeah. You're fine. You go kick <laughs> yeah. balls over to the side. You're good. Don't worry about it, kid. I know. I know, <laughs> but man, uh yeah. They're calling it this. Punter took part in a rare drill. Uh says he normally wouldn't participate in that. Well, it doesn't say why he did participate in that. By the way, just for vindication for me, this is only one mock draft. I looked at NFL.com, top 20 rankings. Clyde edwards layer higher than Jonathan Taylor going into the draft. Yeah, so I'm my, just saying. My answer to always that is, like, the guys making the picks are supposed to be smarter than some slap putting together right. a mock draft. They are. And who ranks the rankers? I know. But I just I remember going in that Taylor wasn't the clear-cut number one back, at least by no, all I the know. alleged points. That was my point. No, well, he's a second-round pick. Yeah, it wasn't like people are dying to get him. No, I get it. Uh, Colts implemented wind sprints after some of their practice to supplement conditionings. That's it. How about this? Sanchez was ranked ninth in punts inside the 20. I'm just telling you. Kicking off, punting, holding. Mm, valuable guy. Valuable guy. Give me a cold quit. Is there another punting family? I feel like there's another punting family that I'm missing. I don't know. But anyway, give me a cold quit, and let's go. That's it. We'll be right back. The Mower Shop in Fishers proudly offers Spartan mowers from compact to commercial, 42 to 72-inch size decks with power up to 38 and a half horses. TheMowerShop.com, 317-849-9500. Hi, guys. It's Andrew. Are you struggling with erectile dysfunction and sick of the pills? Well, today, Wednesday, August 24th, we're running an unprecedented one-day special you won't want to miss out on. Pine Grove Medical Clinic uses the most powerful form of wave therapy. This is a technology clinically shown to repair blood vessels and improve blood flow. Even Cambridge has studied our technology. If you're ready to transform your love life, grab your phone. Today is your day. Call us now and you'll qualify for the assessment and ultrasound totally free. Also, a gift that can produce powerful results in the bedroom in minutes. You're going to love that, guys. And today only, we're offering six tune-up treatments to our patients free. This is our most lucrative offer ever worth $1,200, but call today Wednesday and qualify totally free. 317-552-1111. That's 317-552-1111. Guys, put a stop to your erectile dysfunction and get your love life back. Call Pine Grove Medical Clinic now to qualify. This offer ends today. 317-552-1111. Kick off week one of the NFL with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Hey, it's Mark from Kevin and Query, and the NFL regular season is right around the corner. And what better way to get started than with $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet? All you have to do is sign up with promo code MARK to get in on the action and turn game days into paydays all season long. Maybe you want to use that $150 in free bets on the Colts' over 9.5 wins on the season or to win the AFC South. The choice is up to you. So place your first $5 bet, whether it's the money line or the point spread, anytime touchdown score or total yards. You can even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't fumble your chance to get $150 in free bets, win or lose, with promo code MARK, M-A-R-C. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. 21 and over and present in Indiana. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is now withdrawable free bets. They expire 14 days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Hubler has it. Hubler has all the top brands. Chevy, Buick, GMC, Ford, Acura, Honda, Mazda, Nissan, and more. And every new vehicle includes a 10-year, 200,000-mile warranty. Looking to sell your vehicle? We'll pay you top dollar, even if you don't buy ours. Take it from Brooke Hubler. You can get a car anywhere, but you can only get a warranty like this at Hubler. 10 years, 200,000 miles. Visit drivehubler.com. Hubler has Warranty available on new vehicles except certain models not transferable or available on leases. Copy of the warranty is available for review at the dealership. The IRS is ramping up collection, and if you owe back taxes or have years of unfiled tax returns, listen carefully. Before it's too late, check your eligibility for the Fresh Start program still offered by the IRS to reduce or even eliminate your tax problems. Call our special hotline number now and find out in minutes if you qualify for these life-changing debt reduction programs. Business or personal, if you're in a payment plan with no end in sight, 
Have unfiled tax returns, under audit, have a wage or bank levy, or finally just want to know your options? Call the experts at Republic Tax Relief and stop collections immediately. A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau with a five-star rating from Yelp. This veteran-owned company has the fight you need to take on the IRS. Don't go at it alone. Call their hotline number now, 800-491-3318. That's 800-491-3318. Find out if you qualify today. Call 800-491-3318 or go to republictaxrelief.com. The ultimate end of summer party is coming. All in Music Festival Labor Day Weekend 2022, September 3rd and 4th at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. Featuring great music, great food, and lifestyle with performances by Daryl Hall and John Oates, Cage the Elephant, John Fogarty, Portugal the Man, plus Lucinda Williams, Trampled by Turtles, The Four Tops, and many more. Multiple stages, multiple days. All in Music Festival Labor Day Weekend 2022. Get details and tickets now at allinfestival.com. Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well, trying to find a needle in a haystack, but not with ZipRecruiter. Its powerful technology actively finds and invites qualified candidates to apply to your job. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you the needle in the haystack. See why four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Explore Banana Republic Factory now and enjoy 50% off everything from heritage classics to new arrivals for the season. Discover essential styles from $24.99. Find your nearest store or shop online only at Banana Republic Factory. The 9th Annual Indy Labor Fest is September 3rd on Monument Circle, an admission-free street festival with a chance to learn about career opportunities hosted by the Labor Unions of Central Indiana. Before they break the streak of eight consecutive opening day losses, the Colts need to practice. What are we talking about? Practice, man. What are we talking about? Practice? Yeah. Practice. Recap practice. Follow the Colts' progress through camp with daily in-depth updates from Kevin Bowen. It's been pretty uneventful. At 1075thefan.com. Making sure we have enough depth. Your home for complete Colts coverage. Who are we as a team? Is 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. It's the Dan Dockett Show, 93.5 and 107.5, The Fan. Reading a great article on why Urban Meyer is the best coach in the history, or at least he's better than Saban. It's really good. It's nice to see a nice article on my man. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. All right. We're looking for a punter here. Yeah. Yeah, we're looking for a uh, a punter, and uh, we need a cold quit. What is our punter doing? What is he doing? What is he doing? Like, why is he running sprints? Look, it's not his fault. Of course, I look. If I'm with Jimmy, if the if the coach said, "Hey, Jimmy, you know everybody's going to run sprints, but you," mm. okay, yeah. I'd feel like a slap, Dan. I would. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. I agree with you. Then I'm over here but just launching it... punts, and I'm like, why are you guys all sweaty? What, what, <laughs> you, what have you been doing? <laughs> I'll tell you, Jeff. Coach just said, go over oh, there. Like, Where did the rest of you go? Uh, Aston Dillon was sweaty yesterday, man. He was sweating up a storm. All right. I, 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 I had a moment to think about what you said. Sure. And my thought is, is it unspoken? Probably. You know what I mean? Like, all right, we're going to go down there and work on our directional snaps or work on our punts. You know, I, hey, look, Dan, I heard the local uh, dying papers writing a story about really happening to your hip, utilizing unnamed stories. No, that'll come from Dana in two years when she pays somebody to say, I know what happened. Like that kid from Scottsburg, two years later, two and a half years, I, it was me. You don't think some shenanigans happen to come out of that, please? Anyway, uh, back to uh, uh, Jimmy. Do you think the punter affects the eight and a half, nine, nine and a half, ten? No way. No, no. I mean, I, I, it's going to affect situationally, but to say that it has the bearing impact on that win total being 
lowered is tough for me to get behind. You know, one thing, though, and I don't know, I haven't looked at this. Have you looked at all? Because this is interesting. I don't think the punter affects it, okay? And I don't think McAfee's coming out of retirement. He's hurting. But I do think this, Jimmy. Do you do you think? And, 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 oh, no, I don't think this. I looked the other day, and I'm going to look at it right now. The Tampa Bay Bucks seasoned win total was off. It was offline. You couldn't get one uh, the last few days, even with Brady coming back. Now, I'm guessing they've got one now. But they took that bad boy off, and it was not on last I looked. Now, I don't know. Did that affect it? I have no idea. But I'm looking right now. Let's see. Uh huh. Chiefs, 10.5. Where are you going, over? Yeah. Buccaneers, 11.5. I'm going under. Under's where the money is. Under, they're saying, is minus 130. Over, you get plus money. I don't think under is crazy, but I still think they can get 10 wins and win the division. Like I, so 11 and a half is the number. Right, that's what I'm saying. If I'm betting under, like I'm fine with that because I agree with you. Their schedule's tough, but I still think yeah. that they'll win the division at 10-7. Yeah. Punter's big, man. I, look, I, look, I'm not saying that a punter is more impressive or important than a quarterback. Don't get me wrong, but when you got a good one, I, I'm telling you, McAfee educated me, man. He's like, Dan, I flipped the field. I'm like, you're right. You're right. Do you know uh, last year the difference between Saquon Barkley? No, I'm sorry, not Saquon Barkley. He was injured and he was not very good in the last two years. The difference between Zeke Elliott, who played Jimmy, I, if I told you Zeke Elliott played every game last year, he, he did. He played 17 games last year. How many yards would you think in 17 games Zeke Elliott ran for, knowing that Jonathan Taylor ran for 1,800 yards? Do you have the whole list in front of you right now, or do you just have no, those No, I, I just know this from this morning. Okay, because I was going to ask for a hint. Um, I, 800. No, he ran for 1,000. Okay, that's just trying to, yeah, trying to gauge for, if I'm yeah, doing No, 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 I know what okay. you're doing. Yeah, no, no, no. But 1,000 isn't much in a 17-game season when you play every game and you're the featured back. Right. Jonathan Taylor averaged five and a half yards a carry. Zeke Elliott averaged 4.2. I don't know if you remember this, but they gave Zeke Elliott a ton of money, man. I mean, a ton of money. And when you're ranking running backs... Uh, one of the things that has happened in running backs is guys have come in, at least when you're ranking them based on, let's say, PPR, whatever the hell that means. Points per reception. Oh, yeah, wait, yeah. Fantasy yeah, ranking. Yeah, points per for, reception is, is oh, fantasy. Po- all right, what would be the best fantasy kind of draft to determine their overall ability? Standard rankings. All right, standard rankings, standard leagues, okay? okay. Running backs. Sure. Who are you saying who's the top? Yeah, who would be the top? Probably Jonathan Taylor. He is. Second. Um uh Christian McCaffrey. Derrick Henry, third. Christian McCaffrey. Najee Harris, fourth. Is is McCaffrey in the top? I don't five? know. I'm going one by one. Because <laughs> this is standard league, yeah, so I, I guess know. he's maybe Delvin Cook. Yeah. Okay. So we're we're Austin talking about Eckler. featured backs. Nick okay. Chubb. Okay. Seventh is who? Christian McCaffrey. Courtesy of Colts.com. There you go. Nice work. Yeah. And then you got Kamara, Joe Mixon, and then uh, Javante Williams. I tell you, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, just watching him. I did think, and I got a chance to watch him maybe three times. I thought De- DeAndre Swift for the uh, Lions was pretty good. Like, I, I'm sure, again, you know, Jimmy, when you go watch a practice, It'd be fun to go watch, and truthfully, watching Jonathan Taylor run, you know he's pretty good. And I got to tell you, DeAndre Swift ain't far behind in terms of just watching. You know, I don't know the reading of the defense, the scheme, all that stuff. But when you watch things like bursts and all that kind of stuff, DeAndre Swift is pretty freaking good. He's like 11, 12. He was, he was from that 2020 draft class. He was the highest touted back from that 2020 class. Was he coming class. out? Yeah. 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 I always like Najee Harris. I, I think Najee Harris is good. I, I but I, again, I, I don't know how. Man, Jonathan Taylor's twenty three years old. He runs tough. I, again, I, I, the only thing I can tell you is this: he's the closest thing I've ever seen to Walter Payton, and I've never said that about another player. Like Derrick Henry's, uh, I don't know. What do you want to make him, Earl Campbell? Right, Earl Campbell knocked people over, run through them, still with speed, that kind of thing. But I've never seen anybody play football like Walter Payton 
and I've never never compared anybody. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you, Jennifer. She read my article on uh, on uh, turn to sixty. Turn to sixty was a metamorphosis for me in my own house. I learned not. I learned about not empathy. I uh, gratu. A great. What is it? Being grateful. I learned about appreciation. I did. Just, uh, th- and I appreciate that, Jennifer. Thank you for that. And the article is up, uh, it's on my Twitter page. If you want to get it read, go ahead and let me know what you think. And I appreciate you reaching out, Jennifer. If you think it stinks, tell me that too. If you think I'm getting soft, tell me that too. That's cool. But I don't know. I Look, um, I would not take another running back over Jonathan Taylor. However, however, I would take Derrick Henry as an equal, if that makes sense. Like, does that make sense? I I do. Um, I I think 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 that Derrick Henry. If you told me, okay, you don't have Jonathan Taylor, but you got Christian McCaffrey, I'd say that stinks. I don't want it. He always gets hurt. If you were gonna say, uh, hey, look, uh, you don't have Jonathan Taylor, but you're gonna have Derrick Henry, I'd say, okay, that's great. I agree with El Presidente. Nick Chubb's a bad boy, man. Uh, Nick Chubb's a bad, bad boy, and I do agree with Tyrone Biggums. Uh, Barry Sanders, bad man, but I don't think he was better than Walter Payton. I just don't. Look at Walter Payton's highlights, man. Dan, All right, Jimmy, this is for you. Christian says, I've got the number two pick in fantasy. If JT goes one, who do I take? You trust McCaffrey? If it's PPR, I'd take McCaffrey. You trust he's him? He's been hurt the last two years. Prior to that, he's one of the best backs in football. Everybody says he's the best back. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's him, Henry, and Taylor, right, the last two seasons. Well, prior to that, he yeah. was. But, yeah, I, I, I mean, Dan, it's hard to bank on health. But, yes, I, I believe in Chris McCaffrey. I think he puts it together this season. I think he's a... I just feel like Christian McCaffrey always gets hurt. I, I feel like he always... Now, Nick Chubb... El Presidente ran, missed three games, ran for 1,259 yards, 55.5 yards a carry. I do like Austin Eckler. I think Austin Eckler's really good. I do. I really do. But I'll tell you this when I watch, when I, I, if I had a second round pick or maybe if I was doing fantasy and I desperately wanted a running back and all these guys were gone, I, I got to tell you, man, I would take DeAndre Swift over Zeke Elliott. I just don't think Zeke Elliott's still there. I, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. And I'm also not going to lie to you. I think that I have I have cowboy fatigue. I was talking about the Cowboys this morning on the morning show, and I said, you know, usually on Get Up, the Cowboys are being talked about, and boom, up it came. Dak Prescott this year feels like his team is ready to go. Okay. I want to see what the Jags got. Jaguars.com's J.P. Shadrick. He's pretty good. He's He's been on with us before. And then, of course, the biggest acquisition the Colts got all year, according, ladies and gentlemen, well, according to Rick Venturi, is not Matt Ryan. It's Gus Bradley. We'll talk to him. And then it's Benetti Day. Dan, is your expectation D.D. should be praised for contradicting himself? Look, ex indie cop, I could say anything and you're going to whine about it. You're just one of those guys. What's going on flying high with Airport Jimmy? What's going on? Airport Jimmy and the lovely Angie joining the Mile High Club. Yeah. All right, we'll be right back. The Colts wind up their preseason against one of the top teams in the NFL. In the hands of Tom Brady. The legendary quarterback has seven Super Bowl rings, a hot smoking wife, and the shortest retirement since far. But you won't see it. Giselle has a honey-do list. I want a honey-do list. The Colts take on Tampa Bay at Lucas Oil Stadium Saturday. Touchdown, Colts! Three game at 4.30. Matt Taylor with kickoff at 7.30. On your home for Colts football, 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Sundown Gardens' large selection of container and bald and burlap trees is 30% off through September 4th. Now's a great time to plant 186th Street and Spring Mill Road. Hey, Dan Dockage here. Fall is coming. That means it's time to start thinking about all those things you need to do to get your house ready for winter. I didn't know this. Maybe you did. 
Furnace only lasts 15 years. That's what my friend Larry over at Holwell Heating, Air Conditioning, and Plumbing has told me. If you know your furnace is nearing the end and about to go kaput, give Larry a call. They'll send someone out, take a look, give you honest advice, new equipment pricing before winter sub-zero weather hits. And then your furnace goes out. Face it, no one wants to be left out in the cold. Give my friends at Holwell Heating and Air a call at 317-255-HEAT. That's 317-255-4328. Check them out at HowellHeatingAndAir.com. Baseball is here, and so is the BetRivers.com Sportsbook app, featuring same-game parlays where you can combine the excitement of different bets, all from the same game. Bet the total, spreads, player props, and more. Plus, with award-winning customer service, BetRivers.com Sportsbook app, here comes a baseball joke, is a home run. Download the BetRivers.com Sportsbook app today. It's a whole new game. Must be 21. Must be located in Indiana. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-9-WITH-IT. 1-800-994-8448. Here's what's happening with The Fan. Check out our contest page at 1075thefan.com weekly and enter to win prizes, tickets to sporting events, concerts, and more. Tune in for Friday Night Lights football. This week, Carmel travels to Center Grove. Brendan King with the call. Catch JMV at Friendly's Tavern in Zionsville this Thursday, August 25th from 3 to 6 for the 2022 Evan Williams Tavern Tour. Stop by for your chance to win a $50 gift card and pick up a Tavern Tour t-shirt. For more info, click on 1075thefan.com. My name is Kayla Sinders and I work for Gleaners Food Bank. I'm a local service manager for three counties in our 21 county service area and I nominated Katie. And I'm Jiffy Lube owner Jennifer Sanner. At Jiffy Lube, we are rewarding Hoosier volunteers who use their vehicle to do more to make Indiana a better place to live. My name is Katie Wilkerson. I pick up at the mobile food pantries. The best part of volunteering to hand someone some food and see the smile on their face, the the relief. Without my vehicle, there's no way I'd be able to do this. To go to any of the pantries, it's at least 18 miles. Each month, Jiffy Lube of Indiana provides a volunteer free vehicle maintenance for a year. Whether it's someone who delivers smiles and supplies or drive somewhere to serve on site. Jiffy Loop supports local givers who count on their car to do more for Indy, and we love to hear their stories. If you know a volunteer who impacts your community, nominate them today to receive a year's worth of free vehicle maintenance. Just click the Do More tab at JiffyLoopIndiana.com. Discover Downtown Indy with Indiana Sports Corp's annual Indy Ultimate, Saturday, September 10th, starting and finishing at Monument Circle. Experience the best of downtown's venues and landmarks with this five-mile run walk. This year's brand new route includes Carroll Stadium, the state capital, and favorites like Lucas Oil Stadium and Victory Field. The Jim Irsay Collection will be up in Lucas Oil Stadium with items used by some of the greatest artists in music history. Run with a friend or bring a group. Participants get an Adidas shirt, medal, and Indy 11 voucher to a future match. Register now at IndyUltimate.com. The Colts close out the preseason by hosting the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Coverage Saturday at 4.30 on 93.5 and 107.5 The Fan. It's the Dead Docket Show. 93.5 and 107.5 The Fan. You know, you don't hear this very often. You don't hear about a fight in the bleachers at Wrigley. You don't. I mean, um, there was one yesterday. It was wild. I was just watching it on TMC. You know, of all the places, you don't really hear about that here at Colts, at Lucas Oil, and you don't really hear about it, I don't know, in Wrigley. You hear about it at Comiskey. You hear about different places, but not really uh, at Wrigley. So, hey, look, uh, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, Rest in peace, Lenny Dawson, the former Purdue, Kansas City Chief star, won Super Bowl four. Great picture of Lenny Dawson, Super Bowl one with a fresca and a cigarette. But Lenny Dawson was much more than that. Lenny Dawson was a great quarterback who was smart enough during his time as a player to also be a TV sports anchor. And he did them all very, very well. He was an analyst on NBC. He was the host of Inside the Inside the NFL on HBO for years and years and years. Smooth guy. Seemingly a great guy. I think I could be wrong about this, but I think I met him. Uh, I think at uh, Ted Bishop's. I could be wrong. Ted Bishop's uh, golf outing down in Linton, Indiana. The Phil Harris. You know what I mean? Uh, I I think I think. So you know, at the end of the day. Um, yeah, seemed like, I don't know, seemed like a great, great, great guy. Anyway, 
Uh, yeah, Cubs cards fans don't like each other. I guess maybe that's it. But you really don't see that a whole lot at Wrigley. You don't. You know, um, you know. Anyway, long story short, we'll see what happens. All right. I mean, I get it. There are guys that come on to YouTube chat and just want to complain, and that's fine. Let them do it. Uh, Dan, everything went downhill for Zeke Elliott after he got a feed me tattoo on his stomach. After each touchdown, his rage is shirt and flash feed me. There's a lot of dumb tattoos, but that might be the dumbest. And yes, Daniel J. Dockett's cowboy fatigue is real. I- I'm not going to lie to you. Back in the day, cowboy fatigue um, wasn't real because we didn't have shows in the morning. You know, you went to school in the morning. Or you went outside and played in the morning. You're sitting there to listen to clowns on you know, Fox or ESPN tell you what, you know, how dumb they are. I mean, you went and played. Now guys sit there and they can't wait to watch, what is it, Stephen A. Smith? The hell's he? I mean, I'm not saying he's not entertaining to people and obviously he does a good job, but damn. Stephen A. Smith uh, or go outside and play, I don't know. No, I don't, you know, I don't know. But uh, anyway, I think... I, when I was a kid and the Cowboys were on, you watched. Uh-oh, Chappie says, trainer's looking at Quiddy Pay. Doesn't mean he's hurt. Just means trainers are looking at him. We'll, we'll wait for the update. Danny Pinter is going to be the center, at least until Ryan Kelly comes back. Ryan Kelly is battling COVID. Uh, I think Ryan Kelly got vaxxed. I don't know. Are we going to do a deep dive into Ryan Kelly getting vaxxed? Oh, my God, I hope he is. God, I hope he is. Oh, jeez. Here's a weird story. All right? This is a weird story. Like, Dwayne Wade is one of those guys and his wife that, you know, they're woke folk. They tell you how to be, how to act. All right. Well, There is a huge water crisis in L.A. County, and they've put all kinds of restrictions on it. People are really struggling. Businesses are going bad, uh, you know, whatever, all right? You're not allowed to hit, let your sprinkler hit the sidewalk, use less mo- use less water. You'll likely hear begging Californians to cut down their $500 fines. Well, apparently, uh, Gabriella um, Union and Dwayne Wade don't care. I mean, they just don't care. They got an $18 million property, and they don't care. They don't. They went, in the month of July, they went only 90,000 gallons over what is legally limited. That's uh, 1,400% among the limit. Now, that's actually doing better because they used over, listen to this, they used over 489,000 gallons. They were over in one month. Half a million gallons, which is enough to cover three Utah homes for an entire year or 20 Utah homes for a month. So Dwayne Way, he just don't care, baby. He don't care. Now, of course, they feel bad and they put out a joint statement. Their pool is bad, blah, 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 blah. It's a weird story. It is. It's a weird, weird story. Very weird. So there you go. All right. 317-239-1070. 317-239-1070. Dwayne Wade, turn off the water, man. Took longer. Look on sideline. Pay sitting. Watching practice. Taekwon Lewis in for pay. One thing I do think, at least they should. I mean, the Colts have spent a lot of money, ladies and gentlemen. I mean a lot of money on uh, edge rushers, defensive line. I mean, if you don't hey, – look, if the Colts don't have – if they do not have depth at that position, there's nothing I can tell you. Not a damn thing I can tell you. Nothing. Zero. Zip. Nada. Nothing. Because they've spent a lot of capital on that. I mean, a lot. So, there you go. Uh, we're going to talk some Jaguars. Jaguars, I'm telling you right now, um, Jaguars and Ty- Texans, we're going to know 
whether they're still awful within the first month of the season, but we're not going to know whether they're still both awful before the season. And for the Colts, that means the two opening games. We Hey, whatever happened to us, Sean, uh, Jimmy? He didn't, he didn't text me back. I'm gonna, right. I'm gonna think I'm gonna punt the next week All unless right. I get to him yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. No, that's fine. That's fine. You know, but at the end of the day, hey, look. Did you see this from the Live Tour? Live Tour now, uh, you missed the cut, you still get five grand. There you go. Uh-huh. Purses between fifteen and twenty million. I totally agree with Sage Steele. Seems to me PGA Tour should be thanking Liv at this point. There ain't no doubt. All of a sudden, wait a second. We don't make the cut. We get paid now. 12 tournaments are going to have more money. I'd also be asking, what are we doing here? And apparently, Tiger Woods and Roy McIlroy are starting some type of top golf type thing. All right. There you go. I'm all in. Apparently, top PGA players are supposed to play in elevated events. The four majors, players, three FedEx Cups, Genesis, Arnold Palmer, Memorial, Century Tournament of Champions, and the Dell Technologies match play. You're also supposed to play, you know, in all the things that you're eligible with. So there you go. They doubled their player impact. It will reward the top 20 instead of the top 10. Top finisher and player impact will get $15 million. Man, I tell you this, Sage Steele ain't wrong. These guys ought to be genuflecting, genuflecting quickly to the live tour. They ought to be on their knees thanking them for that. Holy cow. Wow. Hmm. All right. We'll be back. We're going to talk to J.P. Shadrick of Jaguars.com. Get a little feel. Are we expecting, ladies and gentlemen, are we expecting a breakout year from Trevor Lawrence? We'll talk to JP next. Last season, Carmel took a seven-game winning streak into the sectional championship and lost big. Center Grove took their undefeated season to the state championship game and won for the second year in a row. Now, these two independent powerhouses clash under Friday Night Lights, presented by Carex. Don't worry, call the Carex team. Brendan King has the game Friday night at 7 on 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Dan Doggett's here for the Michelis Corporation. Spelled like Michael is, but pronounced Michelis. Michelis has been there for me, and they'll be there for you. We needed renovations to our kitchen. You know who we're calling. We're calling Michelis at 844-FIX-INDY. We had an emergency in our garage. Of course we call Michelis at 844-FIX-INDY. Ladies and gentlemen, also with it, here's the deal. Michelis was there for me during the greatest 20 minutes in the history of 107.5. The fans so good that a 2,000-word essay was written about me in the failing local paper picked up by the USA Today. They were also there for me when we raised a ton of money. Yeah, we raised a ton of money for Franciscan Health at my golf outing on the 17th. I'll go to michelescorp.com. Sometimes an injury or death happens due to someone else's mistake. Find justice with the injury attorneys at Par Ritchie at 317-269-2509. P-A-R-R injury.com. Don't miss the Colts kickoff concert at Lucas Oil Stadium on September 9th from 7 to 10 p.m. This is a one-of-a-kind celebration of football and music with the Jim Irsay Collection and the Jim Irsay Band. Experience the world's greatest guitar collection, presidential artifacts, sports memorabilia from Jackie Robinson, Muhammad Ali, and much more. And for the first time ever, Colts fans will get to see up close historic Colts memorabilia from Peyton Manning, Tony Dungy, Marvin Harrison, Reggie Wayne, and more. The evening will be topped off with a free concert by the all-star Jim Irsay Band, featuring special guests and Wilson of Heart. And the legendary Buddy Guy. That's one night only with the Jim Irsay Collection and the Jim Irsay Band. Friday, September 9th, 7 to 10 p.m. at Lucas Oil Stadium. Get your free ticket at JimIrsayCollection.com. What's happening with the fan? 
Remember to follow the fan on all your favorite social media platforms. Find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Like and follow the fan and stay up to date on events, giveaways, and all things sports. And if you think you have the best sports trivia knowledge, listen to Kevin and Query weekdays 7 to 10 a.m. and call into the pop quiz for your chance to win a signature Jiffy Lube oil service. For more info, click on 1075thefan.com. 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. WIBC HD2, W298BB, WIBC HD3, W228CX, Indianapolis. Thursday on Kevin and Query, our final show live from Colts Camp. We'll be at Grand Park. Tom Deanhart will join us to talk Purdue football. Fun begins at 7. 93.5, 107.5. The Fan. Dan Dockett Show, 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Just ships a day, lonely sailor. Jimmy, we good? Mo way. We're going to talk to JP Shadrick coming up. I can't confirm with my sources, Rigoberto Sanchez has torn his Achilles. That's an injury. That was first reported on our show yesterday. We'll never get any credit because it's a dishonest group of folks here, folks that don't really play by journalistic rules. But that's okay. We're not mad about it. We don't either. Uh, frankly, we don't, and we don't care. But what we do care about, ladies and gentlemen, is this. We care that Rigoberto Sanchez is better. I want it better, Jimmy. I don't want a cold quit in here. I want Rigoberto better. That's it. Make him better. Or make some guy that can punt better. We need somebody that can punt. Give me something that, you know, I don't know. So, no. Uh, interesting question was posed to Jacoby Brissett and how tough it is to try to not to be Deshaun Watson. He says, look, it's very easy for me not to be Deshaun. Cleveland media, particularly as Mary Kay Cabot, are idiots. Not seriously. I mean, they're just idiots. I mean, uh, you know, they didn't. You know, they get mad about everything. Nobody's mad about, you know, a pedophile. Not a pedophile. Whatever the hell you call him, a predator. I guess is what Watson has been described as. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. My man, Daryl. I saw you the other day. What's going on? How you doing, brother? Good. You almost had me get in a car accident when you said Walter Page is better than Barry Sanders. The pick line from Clash of the Titans. Are you outside your mind? Well, I'm just telling you as a football player, I never saw anybody block, pass, catch, throw the football, run. He played special teams. He returned kicks. I never seen anybody better, and I've seen Barry Sanders. So, no, this one I will tell you, I am very much inside my mind, and I will stand by this no matter what names I get called. Damn, but you got to take a look at what Barry Sanders had to do. Really, the really? Line. Do you really? have any idea want, what the Colt, what I the like, Bears were for years and years and well, years well, and years? Fine, they're do the me, same. I'm not saying they're not the same. I'm just saying favor, what. Do, do me a favor. When you get a minute. Google Barry Sanders top ten runs and you take a look. At I got it. That's fine, but nobody. I'm not talking about just running. I'm talking about everything. Walter Payton never ran out of bounds. He turned upfield. He lowered his shoulder. He put the ball ahead. He blocked. He passed. I mean, I'm, I, nobody will ever convince me personally. Now, maybe you can convince yourself, but nobody will ever convince me that. And I said this in a very specific way. I've never seen a better football player than Walter Payton. And Barry Sanders, terrific runner, great cutback runner, fantastic move, spins, great runner. But with everything that I saw Walter Payton do on a team that was absolute garbage except for two years in his career, uh, nobody can convince me. I appreciate somebody thinks the other way, though, Daryl, but nobody's going to convince me no matter what highlights I see. I saw Barry Sanders play. you kidding me? I thought he was terrific. But in my world, nobody better than Walter Payton. Well, we're going to have to agree to disagree. One other right. thing, when are you going to start taking uh, people for your uh, Eliminator Challenge during the uh, We're going to do that start uh, probably on the 8th or 9th of uh, September, right before the first uh, game. Also, I did get a chance to pick up Aaron Glenn, the defensive coordinator, last Thursday night while I was Ubering. Oh, is that right? You like him? Good guy? 
Yeah, 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 and I got that Rodrigo, that number 44, and a couple other guys that picked up out to the Italian out there in Westfield. You're the hardest working man alive, man. I tried, brother. I tried. You're the hardest. Right, Appreciate you, brother. All right, buddy. Yeah, look, I get it. Everybody's got their favorite. Everybody does. But I'm just telling you, my guy, everything. And I'm not just talking about running the football. I'm not. Uh, J.P. Shadrick, Jaguars.com. All right, we're sitting here in Indy. And the Colts, the beloved Colts, open up with the Texans at the Texans and, of course, the Jags at the Jags, where it all went wrong for the great Carson Wentz, who, by the way, comes into Jaguars first game of the year. How good do you think right now after getting a chance to see? How much improved are the Jags? Well, first off, it's great to be back with you. Yeah, man. For the little bit of a delay. We're in Atlanta. I just got out of a press conference today. So, uh, I think on paper, um, I don't know, eight, seven wins more. I mean, right? Something like that now. That would be more than three. I would say about seven, eight wins total. They've got better frontline talent. you got to start with that. If you can't hang with starters in this league, okay, you're going to be, get beat pretty early, which has been the case over the last few years around here a lot of, in a lot of instances. The trick now is building the depth behind that in the next couple of years to come, either you know, in this coming off season. Uh, and, and the years ahead. But they feel like, at least on paper, they have the front-line receivers now. They have a running back who's an explosive guy who's healthy, and they've got a quarterback going into year two. That's on the offensive side, and then a whole revamped defense. So uh, there's a good feeling now. Um, well, there should be a good feeling now. It's training camp. Let's see it for real in week one. The great Rick Venturi told me, he goes, Dan, I'm just telling you, he calls them ambient players, players that a coach has to take ambient the night before because you worry about him. He goes, I'm just telling you, the Jaguars got more ambient guys than you think. They got some real yeah. dudes on that team, both sides of the ball. Is Travis Entian uh, projected to be one of those guys? I could see that. I mean, he looks like he should have looked coming out of college and maybe a little different now because he's had a whole offseason to try to rehab off that injury the Liz Frank injury that he had in his foot in the preseason last year, and he really dedicated himself to it. He's back. He, he told me the other week he doesn't even think about it anymore, and that shows in the practice field. He has a little more burst than a lot of other guys on this field right now. Um, and, of course, we've seen in the past he can take it the distance from almost anywhere. At least in college he was able to do that. I like that part of it for sure. Um, Zay Jones might be one of those guys. Christian Kirk, the, that combo together, they obviously paid a lot of money, so they believe like those guys should be that. Um, we'll see that in practice, I think, uh, and, and in the preseason games. We've already seen a little bit of that with Christian Kirk last week. So maybe that's one of those also. And then I think on defense, you know, there's a, there's a handful of guys that could be that. We just don't know what it's going to look like yet. I mean, Josh Allen is due for a big year. It's just fourth year he, he they already gave him the fifth year option next season but if he has a big year this year with Trayvon Walker on the other side there you go that's that's pretty good pass rush tandem and you could probably add those guys to the list too once they get cranked up and moving how good is Walker has he been okay he's been fantastic I think you know he's he's big he's bigger than I thought he's six six Hmm. And you read that, like, okay, he's not 6'6", six, six, but he is the true 6'6". Six, six. Like yeah. He's a big human being, long arms, and uh, a big, powerful guy. So, so far, he has been, in the preseason at least, primarily a, a bull rusher. So he's pushing the offensive lineman back, right? And uh, He's still got to work a little bit, I think, as the time goes on, on creating some of those pass rush moves to get around the edge and do some of that stuff. He's still an outside linebacker. That's his own position. I mean, I think in theory down the line, they might be able to move him inside if needed, but they've got guys they paid to, to rush from the inside too. So that may not have to worry about that right now. Um, he's been good. He's got his head on straight. Josh Allen has taken him under his wing and is, is kind of helping him along through the preseason and training camp here. Uh, he's all about ball. There's no, there's not like Instagram stuff. He's not worried about commercials or any of that. He's here to work. He's here to get better, and he's here to, to play week one against Washington. Well, I'm no genius, but a 6'6", incredible athlete with enough talent to be number one in the draft that seems to work hard, has a decent mentor, and is all about ball, I got to tell you, that's a pretty damn good combination right there. 
<laughs> right? You know, and it's funny, like the criticism uh, right after the draft. Oh, they shouldn't have taken Walker. They should have got an offensive lineman. Who's this guy? He was like the fourth best defender at Georgia. You know, what are we doing? Well, they had a, a different vision, and I think they had that lined up. Now, they weren't going to go offensive lineman because they had they were working on Cam Robinson's extension at left tackle uh, well before the draft. So they knew that was kind of coming. They knew that wasn't in the picture. Trayvon Walker, they felt, had a little more versatility if needed, like we just talked about, probably than Aiden Hutchinson. No offense to Hutchinson. He's a fantastic pass rusher, but that might be about what he is. Um, with this guy, with his size and with his background and the way he was brought up and everything, they, they just liked that whole package, I think. How is the offensive line? Brandon Sheriff still there? I mean, that guy's been all over the place. The reason I follow him is because uh, – he played with a uh, my co- my brother my son's college roommate's brother, uh, and everybody that goes to <laughs> Iowa is like you know a first round pick, right? I mean that's just what you are. But he's on the line. You got Fortner at center. You mentioned Cam Robinson. This line good enough? They're better. Um, I mean Brandon Sheriff's been to five Pro Bowls. I know. So there you go. So he understands how to what the standards should be, and I think that's a big important thing for this group. Cam Robinson's been around the league. He just got an extension, so he got paid, and he's playing at a high level. He doesn't have to worry about all that, he said the other day. Hey, so I can just go play free. So, so far in camp, it's been good. Um, And then the left guard, they put uh, Ben Barch in there last week as a starter. Young guy, went to a D3 school, but he's a big physical guy. That's a good thing. Uh, The center is the the, uh, rookie, Luke Fortner, out of Kentucky. He's a draft pick this year. They like his movement ability, and he's got like three degrees out of college. So he's not going to be overwhelmed by a shift in linebackers. I think he's going to be okay. And the question still is right tackle. There is still a battle going on between Walker Little and Jawan Taylor at right tackle, and it's going to go down to these two days of training camp. We just got to Flowery Branch today. They're starting practice now and another one tomorrow, and I think those two practices will determine who the starting right tackle is. But if you go by the last preseason game, it's probably right now the incumbent Jawan Taylor's gig. We'll see how these practices go. See, here's what we do, right? We we um, we say here in Indy that we have by far the best offensive line in the world, even though we don't make playoffs and we can't beat the Jags. As you can tell, I'm very sarcastic <laughs> in that, right? I mean, we oh, man, our offensive line. And I try to tell people, I go, you know, there's a lot of good offensive lines and a lot of teams that made some moves, whether it's signing a guy like Cam Robinson, bringing in a guy like Sheriff. I mean, there's a lot of teams that make some pretty damn good moves on the offensive line. That's why I brought that up. Well, the trick is just keeping it intact, too. Right. Because I mean, you, can't, you can't control an injury or two here or there, and then the depth on a lot of these offensive lines isn't what it, you know, what it probably should be around the league. And, and you could argue that the starting caliber of offensive lines around the league is not what it once was. It's just a different game now, right? So uh, you're, you're very fortunate if you have five starting players on that line that you're very confident in because not every team in the league can say that. So they're still working through it here. They, they've got some guys behind those starters they're confident in also, but, um, but they've got to give Trevor time. And, that, you know, that, that's, the, that's the number one goal is to give Trevor Lawrence time to stand back there and run this offense, uh, this brand-new offense, like they feel like he can. Hey, you know, I want to uh, – J.P. Shadrick joins us on the hotline brought to you by the Mower Shop. Go see Paulie at the Mower Shop. He'll give you a great deal. Take in all your stuff, too. He'll fix it. I take everything in there. Uh, Jaguars.com. All right, I have this theory that's called the Andrew Wiggins. It's a new theory. It's the Andrew Wiggins theory. Andrew Wiggins, number one pick in the draft. Didn't do great. Did fine. But, I mean, all of a sudden he gets to a team where he's surrounded by better players and Golden State, and you can make the argument that he, if not for Steph Curry, would have been the most valuable player of the finals. I, My theory is first-round picks are really good. Guys like Trevor Lawrence, JP, are really good. They just got to get it figured out. Sometimes... Unfortunately, a 23-year-old or whatever, it doesn't happen in the first year. Is Lawrence simply really good and just needs to get this thing figured out with a line and receivers? That's the feeling, right? I mean, there was so much going on last year that it was difficult to really judge that, uh, as I think moving forward. It's a good thing he got those 17 games in. He has that experience, in-game experience, in the huddle, getting to the line. Now it's a whole new offense and everything around him. They've got coaches around him to kind of help him through that. 
Um, so, yeah, it feels like he can be really good. It's, it's not like you just, you know, throw a, a dart at a dartboard and pick a number one overall quarterback. You have a pretty good idea of what this guy could be and his mentality and the way he goes about his business. And, you know, it's not like he's a big rah-rah guy. He's very calm, cool, and collected. And that can go a long way with an offense that's new coming in. So uh, things might not go great all the time. Hey, no big. We'll get it the next time, and we'll work on it and continue to improve. That's kind of the way he goes about it. So, yeah, there's there's confidence here that he can be the guy here for a long time. When I saw him first series against the Colts last game of the year, I went, uh-oh, this is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, you still kind of felt like the Colts were going to win, but you're like, wait a second here. This wasn't very good. Does he have on a daily basis, because you get to see him, you know, as much as you want to, being a guy with Colts, or excuse me, with Jags.com, does, does Jaguars.com, do you, do, does he have immense ability? Is he a guy whose ability pops to you? Feels like it. You know, there's some throws last week in that preseason game against the Steelers that, you know, only certain guys in the NFL could make. There was a throw out to the side by the Marvin Jones just out of the reach of a defender and he had to put it in a tiny window to get it there but he had the time his feet were in good position and he made a perfect throw over a defender into a hole and it was a couple of instances of that where okay he had time and he's really good on the move if they have a moving pocket that's been very good for him in the preseason so far we saw a little bit of that last year but i think you're going to see more and more of that He's really good on the move, left or right. You know, it's kind of weird rolling left and throwing right-handed, but he somehow works it out and gets it done somehow. So he's doing things that a lot of not a lot of other guys can do. That's a good start, and then you put in everything else in this offense around it. And I think, um, yeah, we're in a good position here. I want to go back to Christian Kirk. Uh, people can, you know, yeah. it's not my money, so I don't care what the hell you spend on him. I just want, if I'm a quarterback, I just want some guys and go catch the ball after they can get open. You know, how good's he? What do you think? So far, so good. I mean, he's been, you know, he hasn't played a preseason game until this past Saturday. It was his first one. They targeted him eight times. That was a that was a point of emphasis. Let's, he's out of here. Let's throw the football to him. And Trevor misfired a few times early on some third downs. Probably should have made better throws. But then Kirk's open. Like, he's open a lot, it feels like. Mm-hmm. Uh, just finds a little, a little nook in the defense and finds a way to get open. And that is invaluable, like we were talking about, for a younger quarterback trying to figure things out in a new offense. If it, whether it's called a safety valve or whatever you want to call this guy, hey, that's a good thing. And, okay, he may not be a burner down the field. They got Zay Jones for that, they feel like. Uh, they got some options at tight end that they're really confident in, at least early. You put Christian Kirk in the middle of that, and you could move him around if needed in the offense. Yeah, his separation, the way he kind of finds a hole, that's perfect for Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, you know, I I, I got people texting me, oh, crap. You know, like, because, you know, Colts open up. Colts don't beat the Jags. Colts now are hearing uh, from you and from others at the Jags. Wait a second. These aren't your 1-16 in 16 Jaguars. Um, people in Florida, people in Jacksonville, cautiously optimistic well, I mean, you got to consider, I've been around, this is my 11th season with the team, and we've had one winning season in yeah. those previous 10 years. It was 2017. Uh, the rest have been just pretty much awful. So I think people are somewhat jaded uh, with everything that's gone on, all the changes over that time frame. You know, this is now, gosh, the fifth full-time head coach in those 11 years. So, you know, is this one the one that sticks? I think that's what a lot of people are uh, still maybe a little hesitant to go all in again. Uh, you know, you start winning some games early, though, and this team finds some confidence, I think they'll come back again, obviously. I mean, that's just the way it worked in 2017. So there's fans here. They're, they want to see a successful football team, but I think they're just, with everything that's going on, okay, a little cautious is probably the yeah. best uh, way to approach it. <laughs> yeah, I figured. JP, I always appreciate you coming on, man. Thank you so much. Hey. Hey, thanks for having me. I saw Gus Bradley's on next, and, and you tell him hi from me. He's one of the best human beings on the planet, and I we loved him here. He's a fantastic guy, and um, uh, we hate to have to face him twice a year, but we will. You know what? <laughs> hey, JP, you know what? Uh, Rick Venturi, 35-year defensive coach in the NFL, told me the best acquisition the Colts made, not Matt Ryan, Gus Bradley. Said it best. So.
Yeah. I don't doubt it. He's, he's, he's great for the organization. Um, anything you want on and off the field, he's got it. He's a great defensive coach and, and just a great guy and a fantastic family and everything. So you tell him hello for me. He's I will absolutely do that, JP. Thanks for that. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. Thanks for the time. You got it, man. That's uh, JP Shadrick. I'm trying to tell you, <sighs> these two teams that the Colts open up with are no joke. No joke whatsoever. Like, you know, I guarantee you Gus Bradley isn't looking at Davis Mills and saying, well, this is a guy that we beat 61-3 to or whatever it was last year. I guarantee you that's not the case. I guarantee he's pouring over film going, man, I think this dude's pretty good. What's that? Coach oh, Coach Bradley. Is he on? Uh, Coach Gus Bradley joins us. Uh, Coach, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I feel like we know each other through Tim Miles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how do you know him? <laughs> I, you know what? When I was at North Dakota State coach, and he was the head basketball coach. So, oh, yeah, we developed a friendship over the years. So I went and saw him when he was at Nebraska. So, yeah, no, I, I know that you have a relationship. I don't know how good, but I know you have a relationship. No. <laughs> hey, I, 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 uh, I had to be told by ESPN to tone it down because I went after Nebraska for getting rid of him. I mean, I, I'm a oh, bit – Oh, is that right? Oh, God, yeah, man. <laughs> Gus, I uh, – I'll tell you what else. Um, I think he's a mutual friend. Rick Venturi told me of all of the acquisitions the Colts made, he said getting Gus Bradley to coach the defense is number one. So you got a fan in my man, Rick Venturi. <laughs> well, we, we hope that we can uh, meet that standard. He's a good man. I've known him for some years now through John Gruden, and he's a great man. I appreciate him. Yeah. Hey, by the way, J.P. Shadrick of Jags.com, Jaguars.com, I just had on, told me to tell you hello. Oh, that's great. Yeah. He's a good man, too. So yeah. Yeah, we're talking about good people. Hey, let me go this route with you. Quitty Pay, he okay? I mean, we getting all these things where he had to be uh, looked at by the trainer. Is he okay? Yeah, I don't know. You know, we just finished practice, so I'm going to oh, go okay. see him right after we get done now. So, you know, he seemed he was just standing on the, sitting on the sidelines. So, uh, you know, that we're, our hopes and prayers are with him. Coach, what made you decide you wanted to come over here? Well, I mean, it's great people. Um, I had a relationship with Philip Rivers. And, um, you know, when Frank and I first visited, uh, Philip and I had a lot of conversations about his time here. And it was all good things. And just around the league, you hear good things about the organization and obviously about Frank and Chris. So that was the big draw. And, you know, the people here, the players, it's a good squad. Uh, it's got a lot of good players on there. So, you know, there's a lot of things that led to it. But uh, those are the main things, and that's kind of how it all started. You've got loyal guys. Like, I, I was talking to Faison the other day, and I'm like, why are you here at Gus Bradley, man? You know, in Gokwick. <laughs> I mean, seriously, you got dudes that love playing for you. Well, he's a good man. I mean, there's a, like I said, there's a lot of good people here, a lot of good players, and I'm looking forward to build relationships with them, as our whole staff is. But, you know, you, you're in here, you know, I guess it's not long compared to a lot of people, 18 years, but you get around good people, good players, and you develop relationships with them. So I'm just really pleased, we all are, that it worked out with Face being here. You have been a lot of places as a defensive coordinator, as a head coach. Uh, give me your assessment of the talent level defensively for your, your squad. Well, I'm pretty positive by nature, so uh, I, I'm really excited about this group. You know, you start with the D-line. You hope that you have a veteran presence that's a strong leader at each level. And with the D-line, guys like Grove and Yannick and, and, and Buck, I mean, those guys are, you know, at a, you know got a lot of experience and great leadership there, along with some of the younger guys we have. And you look at the linebacking crew, you know, with Shaq and Zaire and Bobby and, and EJ, you know, there's some experience there, and they're really good athletes and good football players. And then the secondary, you know, Kenny, you know, and Julian back there. So I love, really enjoy it because it's got a good mixture. And uh, not only good people, but play at a high level. I said that you were the de facto general manager because all of a sudden here you come and moves are starting to be made, including Stephon Gilmore, man. I mean, were you the general manager here? Did you tell Ballard, <laughs> hey, look, I got this? <laughs> no, no, no. No, let's make that clear. All right. We had conversations, though, and uh, 
you know, I think that was in the works, you know, probably before I even talked to Frank, you know, so some of the changes they were going to make. But, you know, Gilly's a great guy. He's another one that has that presence in the back end. You know, he's seen a lot, and he can share his wisdom with the whole group. What did you think um... – Last week, you know, coaches always say, and I live this, you you, you know, you get to play against another team, you get to control certain things. What did you see in the couple of days you got to go against Dan Campbell's Detroit Lions? Well, it was a good, you know, a good experience for us because, you know, teams attack you differently. And for weeks now, we've been going against our offense, and they have a certain way they're attacking it. And then you go up against Detroit, and it's a really different version, starting, you know, with Temple. They play it at a high tempo, so that was great for us. And then just the way they attacked us out of different personnel groupings. So some things that we didn't see in practice, and, you know, this team right now in a new system needs banked experiences. And I think going against Detroit provided some of those. How could you what, – how would you describe your defense? Well, it's a mixture. You know, we like to be aggressive on the perimeter. You know, you see a lot of press coverage as much as we can out there, as, you know, as, as long as we can. So that, that part of it is there. And then, you know, it's, it's based on just doing things really good. It's really, Dan, on the philosophy that it's a precision league. And, you know, offenses now, the, you know, affecting the quarterback is so important. If you don't, they're precise. So it's based on the philosophy that we got to be really precise. And the volume will be based on our precision you know, how much we do and how much we change up. So, but, uh, you know, nowadays you really got to affect the quarterback. Obviously stopping the run, those things are all key, but somehow affecting the quarterback and create some confusion to where even if you don't get a sack, you create hitches, you know, and, and create some indecision. I try to tell people this, and I'm curious, you know, you come out and your first couple games are on the road. You've coached a long time. You know, people say, well, we're going to beat this team because – I go, man, road games are tough. Like, in basketball, the, the crowd's right on you. Football, first game, I can't imagine that the Texans will ever be better prepared for a game. You know what I mean? I mean, I, th- this is not an easy start. Let's put it that way. No, I, you know, I think I learned that back in my days in Tampa with Derek Brooks. You know, we'd talk about the first team we'd play, and we'd say, boy, look at their talent. And, you know, they got a good running back. And the next week, boy, they got another good running back. He said, Gus, you're going to say this every week. It's the NFL. And I think that holds true with every team that you play. You know, every team, it's such a a league that is trying to create balance. And and, uh, you know you're always going to get your best from every team. And, uh, you know, we know that Lovey Smith does a great job there, the type of team we're going to face. So, yeah, it will be a, a great challenge for us. Coach, i got to ask you something. You mentioned going and being at North Dakota State. You go from defensive coordinator at North Dakota State to the NFL. How did you do that? What, what, how did that come about with the Tampa Bay Bucks? Sure. Well, usually, you know, it's some sort of a relationship, you know, but I didn't really have any ties to the NFL other than one of our defensive coaches uh, at North Dakota State staff. It's actually Joe Burrell's dad, Jimmy Burrell. Mm. Uh, he had a relationship with Monty Kiffin. So Monty Kiffin was looking for some quality control coaches, asked for some names, and he gave them my name. And so they agreed to interview me. So I went down there and interviewed and I happened to get the job. No kidding. I mean, you worked for Bob Babbage, too. I got to know Bob yeah. a little bit when I was at Bowling Green as a basketball coach. He he had coached there, and I think his kids went there. So I got to know Bob as well. Yeah, a great relationship with him. I was fortunate because our staff, Rocky Hager, was the coach at North Dakota State, and moved on, and Bob came in and um, kept me on as a staff holdover. So developed a great relationship with Bob so much that when I was the head coach at Jacksonville, he was a part of our staff. Yeah, I mean, he seemed like a great guy. I think he was with the Bears when I got to know him. Was, was Babbage with the Bears? I, I, I have a, yes, he was. Yeah, I feel like he was Yeah, with the Bears. Hey, but last thing before I let you go, obviously here we love Shaquille Leonard. Latest on him and, and how you see his importance to your defense. Well, a very important. Anytime you got that personality, I mean, he brings a lot of spirit and energy to a team. And on top of it, just his, you know, football playmaking ability. You know, you want all the playmakers on the field you can, and he has that. 
uh, aspect of it. So, yeah, it would be nice to have him, but we're fortunate that, you know, he keeps progressing every day. We get reports on him, and he's making really good progress. So we'll just continue to monitor that, see how it goes as the days get closer to that Houston game. Coach, I can't thank you enough, man. It's great to talk to you. Fun stuff. Oh, thank you. Too. You too. Appreciate your time. You got it. Appreciate yours. That's Coach Gus Bradley, the defensive coordinator of the Indianapolis Colts. Yeah, after practice. That's nice. Uh, thanks to Matt Conti and the folks over there because we didn't know if we were going to get him uh, because I wasn't there. But nice enough to Gus to join us. Benetti at top of the hour. Three years ago, something happened that rocked this entire city. We come back. I'm going to tell you and why I applaud the fans for it. Hi guys, it's Andrew. Are you struggling with erectile dysfunction and sick of the pills? Well, today, Wednesday, August 24th, we're running an unprecedented one-day special you won't want to miss out on. Pine Grove Medical Clinic uses the most powerful form of wave therapy. This is a technology clinically shown to repair blood vessels and improve blood flow. Even Cambridge has studied our technology. If you're ready to transform your love life, grab your phone. Today is your day. Call us now and you'll qualify for the assessment and ultrasound totally free. Also, a gift that can produce powerful results in the bedroom in minutes. You're going to love that, guys. And today only, we're offering six tune-up treatments to our patients free. This is our most lucrative offer ever worth $1,200, but call today Wednesday and qualify totally free. 317-552-1111. That's 317-552-1111. Guys, put a stop to your erectile dysfunction and get your love life back. Call Pine Grove Medical Clinic now to qualify. This offer ends today. 317-552-1111. Hey, kick off football season with Bet Rivers Online Sportsbook. All season long, Bet Rivers is your go to sportsbook for all football related content. Check out betrivers.com or download the Bet Rivers app for the latest odds, unique promotions, player props, and so much more. Every week, Bet Rivers has unique football specials to help you win big. Cheer on your favorite teams and your favorite players with Bet Rivers. It's a whole new ball game, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Must be 21 or older. Available in the great state of Indiana. Only void where prohibited. TNC apply. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, 1 800 9 with it. At Diamonds Direct, you know what we do. But let's be honest, there are a lot of places you can buy diamonds and fine jewelry. But it's not just our products and prices that set us apart, it's our passion. At the very core of Diamonds Direct is an overwhelming desire to make this moment in your life truly magical. It's that father with the tears in his eyes picking out diamond earrings for his daughter's sweet 16. It's that pure delight when the young couple finds the perfect ring to start their journey. And it's the feeling of pride the older gentleman feels when he chooses that anniversary band that celebrates a lifetime of love. At Diamonds Direct, it's not about a transaction. It's about a relationship. It's not about making a sale. It's about creating a memory. It's not about the ring. It's about his pride and her joy. This is our purpose, our cause, our mission, our very essence. To help you create your special moment. To be a part of the happiest time in your life. We are humbled and blessed, honored, and privileged to have the opportunity. Diamonds Direct. Your love. Our passion. The ultimate end of summer party is coming. All in Music Festival Labor Day Weekend 2022, September 3rd and 4th at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. Featuring great music, great food and lifestyle with performances by Tara Hall and John Oates, Cage the Elephant, John Fogarty, Portugal the Man, plus Lucinda Williams, Trampled by Turtles, The Four Tops, and many more. Multiple stages, multiple days. All in Music Festival Labor Day Weekend 2022. Get details and tickets now at allinfestival.com. Explore Banana Republic Factory now and enjoy 50% off everything. From heritage classics to new arrivals for the season, discover essential styles from $24.99. Find your nearest store or shop online only at Banana Republic Factory. Do you know a volunteer who deserves a year's worth of free vehicle maintenance? Tell us their story and nominate them. Click the Do More tab at JiffyLubeIndiana.com. LP Smart Side Trim and Siding helps you efficiently install more siding in less time. Side with LP Smart Side Trim and Siding. Visit LPCorp.com slash pro to learn more. 
Before they break the streak of eight consecutive opening day losses, the Colts need to practice. What are we talking about? Practice, man. What are we talking about? Practice? Yeah. Practice. Recap practice. Follow the Colts' progress through camp with daily in-depth updates from Kevin Bowen. It's been pretty uneventful. At 1075thefan.com. Making sure we have enough depth. Your home for complete Colts coverage. Who are we as a team? Is 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Back up. It's the Dan Dockett Show on 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Hey! Welcome back. Three years ago today, I was at a wedding. I was at my friend Kevin Custer's son, Danny Custer. Great wedding. Fantastic. Downtown Cleveland. Well, uh, downtown Columbus, excuse me. And it was terrific. Not kind of good. Tremendous. Absolutely tremendous. Then all of a sudden, I'm smoking a cigar with Kevin. And my buddy F. Cameron Safali. And phones started buzzing. Yeah, they did. They started a buzz. They started buzzing more. Well, they started buzzing more. Andrew Luck has retired. No kidding. Wow. Andrew Luck's what? Uh, what? Yeah, Andrew Luck's retired per Adam Schefter and fans booed. Now, you guys know I am not boo guy. You guys know. That I say to you, hey, look, don't boo people. You look like an idiot. Just don't do it. All right? Well, guess what? The fans did. Rich Nye, I just retweeted it. Rich Nye uh, had had it cold, and he put it out three years ago today. And Rich, who is a reporter, used to be forever, sports guy at WTHR, uh I got to tell you, man, he had it, and he had it absolutely dead to nuts, soup to nuts, man. Fans booed, and I got to tell you, I'm all for you. Uh, Idiots like Sarah Spain said things like, oh, my God, that's toxic masculinity, Dockage. Yeah, well, you're a toxic dumbass. Fans had every right to boo. Fans had spent money, including myself had spent money on season tickets with the idea being sold a bill of goods that this guy was going to be the quarterback. I had told you that we were very suspect about Andrew Luck and all of his injuries. You're right. We did, El Presidente. We had an emergency show, and to this day, that might be the most watched show on our YouTube chat. Seriously, might be. So fans booed, and of course, all the little Colts blogger boys are saying, well, I I hope Andrew gets the, the send-off that he so richly deserves. He did, $25 million. I was the only guy to ask her say about it. I I hope that 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 Andrew, you know, he he I'm a little blogger boy and he gets to deserve no shut up. Real fans spend real money. We live in the real world. His ass got booed. It should have got booed. And if he's going to be mad at anybody, frankly, he should be mad at whoever, Adam Schefter, I think, flipped on him and gave the goods and put it out there. Maybe it was Jimmy Ursay. I don't know. There you go. That's what should happen. That's absolutely what should happen. You want to be mad at somebody, be mad at somebody else. But three years ago today, it's toxic masculinity. Good. We need more masculinity, much more. Well, two and a half years ago, I thought Dan Dockich was talking about me. Yeah, okay. Telling you, we need way more masculinity. Way more. We need dudes to be dudes. And if you're going to walk out and you're going to leave a fan base high and dry after lying to them for weeks, the Colts lying, then you got exactly what the hell you deserve. And everybody that has ever listened to this show understands I'm not boo guy. I am not boo guy. I'm not the guy that ever goes boo. I think it's stupid. It hurts my face. It does. It hurts my face. So, you know, 
That's the deal. And Andrew Luck, his life is fine. I'm sure all of you guys are saying, well, his life is better than yours. He, 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 he's doing what you should do. Yeah, great. Just be honest about it and quit when people have the option not to buy season tickets and spend their own money. Quit before you go through lying and lying and lying. It's a calf. No, it's a leg. No, it's a lower leg. No, wait, it's a calf. No, wait, it's a lower leg. No, wait. He got hurt three years ago running the ball because the general manager was no good. No, wait. Uh, I was the only one to tell you he got hurt on a ski mountain. He left the team. In fact, I know this from the same source that told me he got pulled off a mountain, and it's an impeccable source, is that he wanted to go rehab in Hawaii that last weeks or so. Damn right he deserved to be booed. You're damn right. No, nah, Dan, we've had a lot of masculinity in history. Look how screwed the world is now. No, you got it backwards. We've had a lot of masculinity in history, and the world was going good. Now we've gone to drag queens in schools and all this other stuff. Now you look how long the, the, how screwed the world is. You're out of your freaking mind. Uh, Joshua says, I bet he gets booed again if they try to put him in the ring of honor. Eh, I don't think so. Nah, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't. Mm, I remember getting a call. Jeff Rickers like, hey, can you do a show? I'm like, sure, let me drive in. Drove in from Columbus, came right here. Lee dropped me off, did the show, baby. And I think it's still the most, I think our segment of the show is the most watched show ever on YouTube on this station. I could be wrong. Mm, I could be, but I don't know if I am. I don't know if I'm not, but it seems like. But I'm just telling you, man, three years ago, you you know, people, oh, you shouldn't boo. Oh, okay, fine. Maybe you shouldn't, and I never do, but I would boo that. What are you talking about? I've only gotten truly mad because I knew this was coming with luck. Uh, I knew. I knew this was coming. Like, I tried to tell you, he ain't the guy you think he is. Oh, he's the greatest player ever. I remember, uh, what's that clown's name? Trey Wingo and Golick went at me. I'm like, yeah, okay, you just haven't watched. They were forced to give an apology. It was really funny. I went off. I went off on Norby Williamson, and I went off on uh, Wingo. I mean, I went off, and Wingo tried to say, whoa, whoa, whoa. I go, Wingo, you can You know, it was unbelievable. My wife was just sitting there laughing. Next day, they had to apologize. Wingo thought he saved face by saying, well, I'm only going to apologize in the segment that I said it. I'm like, I, I don't care. It's pretty funny. Really funny. But anyway, good. Luck, booed, good. What's her face? Sarah Spain don't like it, you're doing well. That clown don't like it, you're doing just fine. Gives a rat's ass. The news of the day, Rigoberto Sanchez will miss the entire season sustained in Achilles injuries. The injury was first reported on our show yesterday. An injury. We didn't necessarily have the Achilles. But we had an injury. We did. Yeah. 317-239-1070. That's the number. Dan at 1070thefan.com is the email address. And as always, we are on Twitter at Dan Dockich at the J Cook. Call me at 317-239-1070 if you were at that game. I want to hear what you thought. There weren't a lot of people there by the end. But luck, and whoever's mad about it, you need to be mad at freaking, uh, you need to be mad at whoever leaked it the hell ain't the play ain't, ain't people's fault that they and you ought to be i don't think you should be mad at jimmy Ursay. jimmy Ursay told me it's the right thing to do what are you gonna do there you go so all right we shall return i got top of the hour benetti we'll be right back for over 25 years quality supply and tool has taken a customer first approach to supplying the construction industry with all their industrial needs big corporations on the other hand think differently here's ryan ling to explain in my career i've worked for the larger corporations i've been on the other side but the owner of quality supply and tool gives us the freedom to take care of the customer no matter what we stock only industrial grade tools and our full service and warranty department truly sets us apart with locations in jeffersonville bloomington and south harding street in indy quality supply and tool thinks outside the box 
store. Hey, Wings Etc. fans, guess what? It's Wings Schooner Madness time. Come get slam dunk dine-in only discounts on big. Ice cold domestic schooners, award-winning jumbo wings, and crispy boneless wings. You heard him right, Wings Etc. fans. From now through August 31st, Wings Etc.'s award-winning traditional and boneless wings are just 79 cents. And our domestic schooners are just five fifty. The beer is cold, the deals are hot, the TVs are tuned. Every play that'd make a season ticket holder jealous. Now through August 31st, traditional and boneless wings are just 79 cents. And domestic scooters are just $5.50. Now's not the time to drop the ball on this limited time pricing. Because Wing Scooter Madness is only for a limited time and only at Wings Etc. Dine in only. Pricing and participation vary by location. See store for details. Wings Etc. In Avon, Camby, Connorsville, Franklin, Greenfield, Marion, Martinsville, Muncie, Noblesville, Peru, Plainfield, Shelbyville, and in Indianapolis on Shadeland and at Emerson and East Thompson Road. Discover Downtown Indy with Indiana Sports Corp's annual Indy Ultimate, Saturday, September 10th, starting and finishing at Monument Circle. Experience the best of downtown's venues and landmarks with this five-mile run walk. This year's brand new route includes Carroll Stadium, the state capitol, and favorites like Lucas Oil Stadium and Victory Field. The Jim Irsay Collection will be up in Lucas Oil Stadium with items used by some of the greatest artists in music history. Run with a friend or bring a group. Participants get an Adidas shirt, medal, and Indy 11 voucher to a future match. Register now at IndyUltimate.com. Our average client received over $54,000 with a simple cash out refinance. And I can structure that loan where you can miss a few months of mortgage payments. The Home Loan Expert.com. Braves, Cardinals, Sunday Night Baseball. The coverage begins at 6 on 93.5 and 107.5 The Fan. It's the Dan Dockett Show, 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. I'm trying to get out of a text uh, chain. I'm in some text chain. And I don't get it. Ten people. I don't understand how this all happens, but I'm in it and I don't like it. By the way, Dan, my mortgage identifies as a student loan. Apparently, I got to pay for you slaps. Not only do I have to pay for my son going to college... Uh, my daughter going to college, stepdaughter, all that kind of stuff. But uh, apparently, I got to pay for you clowns that take out student loans that say, yeah, I can't pay it. Ah, oh, great. Wonderful. Awesome. Yay, Rod. Go fight, win. Whatever. Yeah, apparently. Uh, I'm not taxed enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bubba Patron with a shirt honoring his punter today. He's got a shirt that says Sanchez. Chad, what do you got? Hey, you know, you know, I wasn't at the game. I was watching it when he retired, and you know, he was hurt half his career. And I mean, do you really want the guy playing if his heart's not in it? You know, I mean, I can't, and you know, the the whole toxic masculinity thing. You know, I've been in Marvel movies where the crowd in there didn't like what happened at the end, and they booed. And I don't, I, I think that's just a bunch of fans that are disappointed. So for some idiot to say it was toxic masculinity and people are disappointed being fans of the Colts and they're, you know, that the guy who's supposed to replace Peyton Manning, you know, that, that, that came down from the heavens and, and landed in Indianapolis, you know, out of Stanford, ends up retiring a lot earlier because he was hurt half his career and his, his mind can't handle it, you know, I, I mean, I, I think it was just a stupid take and that's that's just my opinion. But. Appreciate it. Now look, I don't mind him quitting, you gotta do what you gotta do, but, you know, they just they lied so much up to that point. And I, I mean, I know this. Peyton Manning, what I've told you this before, was hostile. That he was brought into it a couple of days in advance. They asked him to speak. Well, I think Andrew's going to be just great, man. I think he's going to be uh, just absolutely fantastic. You know what I mean? And then they went and said, hey, look, uh, man, this ain't great. Anyway. The toxic masculinity is just morons. That's all. I mean, I'm sorry. Just, you know, if you want to say it's toxic, man, I don't care. We need more then because people need as fans to have a say. So there you go. Uh, we can confirm, or I have confirmed, Rigoberto Sanchez has torn his Achilles, an injury for his first report on the Dan Dockett show yesterday by a couple of fans that came up to me and said, hey, 
Did you see that Sanchez was down and had to be carted off? I did not. Nice of those folks to report. Turned out that it was, ladies and gentlemen, an Achilles injury that is going to keep him out for the year. Colts did work out some punters this morning. It does not take long. And there you go. We'll see what happens. I have said I want a cold quit because there's 862 cold quits running around this world, kicking their leg up, punting something. So there you go. That's what I want. Yeah, I'm with Faithful Pastor. If Luck felt that he needed to retire, fine. But the timing shows little respect for the Colts and for the fans. It's exactly right. There are rumors that Luck told them in advance and they try to talk him out of it. Wait to announce. Well, it's fine. That, great. But you didn't. You didn't wait. You showed up on the field. And I don't know. You got booed three years ago today. We celebrated every day. Uh, Pinch Clover 343 on the YouTube chat says it was all about the timing. Timing was the worst, Corey Barton says. And you're not wrong. You're absolutely right. You know, you're sitting there in a game. So, you know, I go back the other way. All right. I, I go back the other way. I go back to this. I go back to, all right. You think you're going to retire. Some people are saying, well, you know, uh, we're going to retire. I'm going to retire. Okay, fine. Well, do it then. Don't string season ticket holders along and then get mad when season ticket holders boo you. I don't know if you got mad or not, but I'm just saying. Uh, maybe he didn't get mad. Dan, I wish you would just stop talking about it. Every darn day we hear this for you. Turn the page. Talk about some Quan stuff you love to talk about. Hey, Greg, I just appreciate you listening, bro. There you go. Uh, Harbaugh legacy was being terrible in 97 and giving the Colts a first round. Okay. No. Dan, I went from wondering if I'd ever pay off my student loans to still having to pay them off and deal with the consequence and taxes for the rest of my life. Well, I want you to have to pay them off. No, of course. Look, I will tell you this. I think Kiefer's thing, his sixth thing, was fine. It was nice. He put a lot of work into it. And that's great. But it didn't tell you nothing. I mean, what did it tell you? Oh, man, he was a great guy. Oh, okay, great. Oh, man, I heard some great stories. Oh, okay, wonderful. Steve Clemenson says, what kind of guy wants to quit before the season starts? Thinks it's going to be all good. Luck is out there laughing it up during the final game. All of us thought he was ready to play. He gives everyone that cares about the Colts a bird. Hey, Colts fan, surprise. Now go get blanked. That's exactly what he did. That's exactly. That isn't even a little bit what he did. That's exactly what he did. And if he wanted to, if he wanted to quit in June, then he should have quit. Period. So, quit, quit. Fine with me. Uh, You know, that's it. But I'm not going to sit here and apologize to anybody about, hey, look, uh, feel bad for Andrew freaking Luck. Are you out of your collective mind? Not even sort of. So... Anyway, uh, that's my take. That's my take. Blank luck and the whole and the Colts horse he rode in on. There you go. Hey Dan, how about some biscuits and gravy? I'm in, brother. Thank you for the note, by the way, too, Rick Stevens. What do you got, Ray? Hey, Double D. How are you? How's it going? Good. Hey, um. I want to I want to call and um, just commend. Well, this isn't my question, but I just want to commend Carson Wentz for um, continuing to have his truck out here um, in the downtown area to feed the homeless. I think you know, oh. outside of the quarterback situation, taking that off the table, but I, I think that's still a good thing that he does. Yeah, um, around here. I, I just, me personally, I'm a big guy, so I, I went out there and and tried their. Um, Pulled pork sandwiches. I know. I know they're still out here. No doubt. I want to say about three or so. I, I think. Nice. Lady told me, but All right. Yeah. 
I just want to say that. But um, my, my, my question comes to be, um, do we need to have some consideration about stop practicing out there at Westfield with, with, with all the injuries that, that, that's going on from last year to this year? I appreciate your phone call, Ray. Um, you know, I asked Chappie about the training staff and all that. I don't think so. I don't think Westfield has any effect on it. I don't. I don't. I mean, I'm not saying. Um, I don't. I just don't. I think injuries are going to happen in football. I think the Colts have had injuries. I think they'll continue to have injuries. I think it's unfortunate. I don't know. I honestly don't know, but I don't think that Westfield is it. You know, a guy tears his Achilles running sprints. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, but I don't think it's it. I don't. Now, I'm the guy that always talks about injuries, and I don't want to hear injuries. You know what I mean? But I don't think Westfield. Hey, Dan, ever think Luck knew he was going to retire? But Ursay convinced him to delay it enough to sell season tickets in exchange for the $25 million. I do. I do. Steve, I do. And uh, there was a couple people around, uh, Jimmy, that pulled him away when I had a chance to talk to him the other day. I would love to sit down with Jimmy at some point and just have a chat with him about that. I think that'd be fun. But I do. I think season tickets, it's too big a business. But I don't think if that's the case, and Andrew Luck didn't think it through very well. And somebody screwed him. Somebody somewhere went to Schefter and put, I got Mark Tinsley Jr. saying, hey, look, I had Woj notifications, right? So when Woj tweets something, you get the notification. Well, Woj notifications came on for folks at the game because, well, he retweeted it, and next thing you know, it was chaos. Now, obviously, a lot of you have the same thing with same thing with Schefter. So, you know, and obviously, most of you, if not all, the smart ones have the same thing with me. We all understand that, of course. But having said that, uh, Woj notifications came up, people booed, and I got to tell you, I think I think luck. Miss and the reason we're talking about it for those of you that don't know is because it's a three year anniversary, mm-hmm. three years ago. Dan, do you think Andrew Luck deserves in the Ring of Honor? I do. I don't think Luck should go in the Ring of Honor for a little bit. Now, Brian Haas says Luck has no business being on the Ring of Honor. He's a quitting diva. Right. My dad would have quit paying for my college. Was looking back, he shouldn't have paid now that the loans are forgiven. No kidding. No kidding. I should have. I, I should have. I, I should this year, right now. Not pay for Tegan. Yeah. I mean, if we're going to forgive loans, what the hell? All right, we're going to come back. Benetti, I'm sure he has loans. His team, they did it again. Uh, I don't know if you saw this. LaRusa walked a guy one and two. Benetti's seen some things. We are wearing Jimmy and I our Benetti shirts proudly. We will be right back with the great man that is Jason Benetti. The Colts wind up their preseason against one of the top teams in the NFL. In the hands of Tom Brady. The legendary quarterback has seven Super Bowl rings, a hot smoking wife, and the shortest retirement since far. But you won't see him. Giselle has a honey-do list. I want a honey-do list. The Colts take on Tampa Bay at Lucas Oil Stadium Saturday. Touchdown, Colts! Pre-game at 4.30. Matt Taylor with kickoff at 7.30. On your home for Colts football. 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Hi guys, it's Andrew. Are you struggling with erectile dysfunction and sick of the pills? Well, today, Wednesday, August 24th, we're running an unprecedented one-day special you won't want to miss out on. Pine Grove Medical Clinic uses the most powerful form of wave therapy. This is a technology clinically shown to repair blood vessels and improve blood flow. Even Cambridge has studied our technology. If you're ready to transform your love life, grab your phone. Today is your day. Call us now and you'll qualify for the assessment and ultrasound totally free. Also, a gift that can produce powerful results in the bedroom in minutes. You're going to love that, guys. And today only, we're offering six tune-up treatments to our patients free. This is our most lucrative offer ever worth $1,200, but call today Wednesday and qualify totally free. 317-552-1111. That's 317-552-1111. Guys, put a stop to your erectile dysfunction and get your love life back. 
Call Pine Grove Medical Clinic now to qualify. This offer ends today. 317-552-1111. College football is back. Jake Query here. It's time to enjoy the tradition, the fun, and the great offers from DraftKings Sportsbook. To celebrate the best time of the year, new customers can bet just $5 on any team and get $200 in free bets instantly, win or lose. You can also place a same-game parlay for a shot at an even bigger payout. Just can buy multiple bets into one, like which team will get the win, which team will score first, and more. Best of all, you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code 1075 fan. Bet just $5 on college football and get $200 in free bets instantly. That's code 1075 fan only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Code 1075 fan. Must be 21 or older. Indiana only. One per new customer. Minimum $5 deposit and wager. $200 issued as eight $25 free bets. Restrictions apply. See terms at DraftKings.com slash sportsbook. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-9-WITH-IT. The ultimate end of summer party is coming. All in Music Festival Labor Day weekend 2022, September 3rd and 4th at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. Featuring great music, great food and lifestyle with performances by Daryl Hall and John Oates, Cage the Elephant, John Fogarty, Portugal the Man, plus Lucinda Williams, Trampled by Turtles, The Four Tops, and many more. Multiple stages, multiple days. All in Music Festival Labor Day weekend 2022. Get details and tickets now at allinfestival.com. The 9th Annual Indy Labor Fest is September 3rd on Monument Circle, an admission-free street festival with a chance to learn about career opportunities. Hosted by the Labor Unions of Central Indiana. 93.5 and 107.5, The Fan. WIBC HD2, W298BB, WIBC HD3, W228CX, Indianapolis. Defending state champ center Grove hosts Carmel on Friday night football. The action begins at 7 on 93.5 and 107.5 The Fan. The Dan Dockett Show, brought to you by Lunacy. The Dan Dockett Show, brought to you by Amoron. The Dan Dockett Show, brought to you by Trap Question. It's the Dan Dockett Show, 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Hey, Jason Benetti, I was supposed to be at Colts camp today. I saw that, I don't know, earlier this week, one of your games got unplayable. Um... And you canceled. I went yesterday. There were so many freaking gnats at my little table there. I went unplayable today and came back in studio. I went. I went Benetti. I went unplayable today. You went unplayable. Uh, were you like pig pen? Like you just showed up and there was like a cloud of dust Man. around you and all these bugs flying around. I, like what, what was going on there? I don't know, but there were there were the gnats, and then it became a ten minute conversation with me and new father Nick on how to spell gnat. Um. You know, I know you can go N A T S, but we both forgot the G. That we're stupid. Oh, you can't. You can't forget the G. No. Don't forget the G. No, no, no. The G's big. The G's big. You know what I mean? The G is big. Uh, we That's are wearing a new rap hit. Don't forget the G. <laughs> uh, are you generally a boo guy? Do you like say okay? Tony La Russa walked a guy in a one and two count, and if somebody boos, you're like, yeah, probably should boo. Uh, are you generally a boo guy? Yeah, I don't I don't really get it. Me neither. Is what I would say. Like, I just don't really know. I mean, you definitely do it to get the sad out, right? I would become a boo guy probably after about four drinks. Because then I get riled up and I want to let let stuff out. Mm -hmm. But I I don't really understand. Like, the thing that's happened in baseball over the past bunch of years is throw to first to check on a runner. Boo. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, yeah, like, why, though? Nobody's booing when a batter calls timeout and walks out of the batter's box, which actually has less strategic value than the throw to first. But this is the type of conversation I get into and people are like, Oh, yeah, no, you are a nerd. You are a nerd, for sure. Because I start to look at, like, boo compared to 
other boo compared to what the value of the play is itself. Because, like, I wouldn't boo somebody for throwing a first because I know they're checking on the runner. Right. But now we're having this conversation, and you're like, I can't believe I asked this to him because now he's like a minute and a half into an answer, and I didn't get anything out of it. <laughs> is there a – sorry, is there an expected boo value chart that you've created? Yeah. We have that ranked? X-boo? Yes, X-boo, yes. X-boo? Uh, no, there's not X-boo, but there should be X-boo. The problem is, uh, after about 30 years, X-boo has too good of a farm system, yeah. and they can't pay everybody, and they move to Washington. Yeah. And they, they're they no longer the Montreal X-boos. They become the Ganats. <laughs> With a G. Uh, all right, I'm going to give you a scenario that happened three years ago right here in our great state. All of a sudden preseason game. People are there, sweet as you please, getting ready. Andrew Luck's frolicking on the field pregame. He's on the sideline laughing with his teammates. All of a sudden, Adam Schefter tweets out towards the end of the game, and 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 he is literally on the field. Andrew Luck to announce his retirement tomorrow. He has retired. And obviously everybody gets these alerts. The crowd, which wasn't a lot left, you know, fourth quarter preseason game, they booed Andrew Luck. They booed him unmercifully. I said, look, I'm not boo guy. But I did spend money, $6,000 on season tickets. I don't know. I ain't mad at the boo there. That boo there seems justifiably booed. Boo? Wait. Yeah. Yeah. No. I. That makes sense to me if you're a season ticket holder. Right, like you, if you, if you sign up for a trip to Barbados, and the plane lands in Denton, Texas, right, you're suddenly like, ah, you know, this is not what I actually had purchased. So yeah, I kind of am not down with it. So that I get. I don't know that booing is going to really necessarily get you anywhere because it's already been decided, right? And this is why, like, people don't leak stuff. But yeah, I like I get that it's an investment for fans. I get that you spend a lot of time on this stuff. I do as an announcer, and I did as a fan. So I, the the reason I do understand booing is because it's your only outlet. That's all you have, and if you get enough people to do it over and over again, maybe you can make change if the powers that be care enough. So I get that, but that's why I wouldn't boo throws to first. Right. Because throws to first don't bother me. Like, then nobody took my funnel cake when a ball got thrown to first base. Nobody took my funnel cake. Now, if every time they threw a ball to first base, some usher came over and had a slug in my beer, <laughs> I'd be like, boo! No more throwing it for boo! Ushers, don't get my beer. There are two things that get boos in baseball. One is the throw over. Two, go to any high school, grade school, little league, whatever park, and a close strike or a close ball gets both sides up. Oh, where was that? Oh, that was, I mean, those two things initiate. And I guess a third would be Andrew Luck retiring while he's on the field during an exhibition game. Those three things are automatic boos. Yeah. Yeah. I also think, I also think it's interesting when, like, a manager or head coach comes out to argue. Yeah but is only talking. They're only talking. They're like, hey, you know, I really think that was a strike. And that goes on for like two minutes or more, you're going to get booed. Oh, yeah? If that same manager is out there kicking dust or like throwing one of the sacks at somebody, like they're going to cheer for it even if it's the road manager because people are like, wow, I like a crazy person. But a really calm conversation about like a mundane rule, that'll get you booed very quickly. Yeah. What other things get you booed, Jimmy? I mean, what what other things are automatic, like, you know, Lou Pinella being introduced? Lou, those aren't Lou. Those are boos. I don't know. No. But the throw to first, I boom. Think, uh, I feel like late game times think, are booed. Like late game times called by the batter if you're the if you're the uh, road what team. About, what bat. about basketball timeouts late in a route? Those get booed by the home team. Yep. Yep. I think I think another one is yet another holding call. Oh, yeah. By the officials. Yeah. Like, if you have a fourth straight play where there's a holding flag, even if the guy just, like, just took a, uh, took a guy down, you're going to get booed on a fourth straight holding call. If you're, you know, Johnny Greer or Red Cashin, right? I know they're not refereeing anymore. <laughs> but if you walk up to the microphone for a fourth straight play, I don't care if there was just a homicide on the field. You're getting booed. I agree. My favorite of those is the ones only fans in the arena experience in basketball. If you had like six bad calls and they go to TV timeout, 
and then the crowd lets them hear it like in yeah. as one unison. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's no, I uh I'm with you on that. By the way, uh I'm I'm texting our boy right now, Eric Shanks. So there you go. Um, let's see. Hey, yeah. you know who's great, by the way? Who? You know who's doing great for himself? Who? On the Little League coverage is Todd. Yeah, Frazzle, he man. is. T. Frazzle. It's terrific. <laughs> He's been great. Yeah. I've a little bit of it. He is an absolute natural. He, to me... He's like the baseball version of you because he's just like, yeah, man, you know, here's the story. Like, he he loves that stuff, and he's really good at it. He's really enthusiastic, too. Like, he, yes, he loves that stuff. Yes. Yeah, and you know what? I saw them going over t Fraz highlights, and mm-hmm. uh, he was beaming, at, you know, watching him as a 12-year-old. You know what I mean? Hey, yeah, he loves it, and and he had the same swing. He when did. he was like 38, he was one arm and balls to the pole side out of here at 320 down the left field line, and he was doing the same thing when he was 12. Yeah, I hope he gets, I hope he can, if he wants to, um, you know, I, I hope he, you know, gets involved because I think he's terrific. I do. Me too. I mean, Me too. and if you get the endorsement of Dockage and Benetti, what more do you need? Yeah, nobody needs anything else. No, other than that one thing. I, I mean, I, I honestly think our text thread created that analyst. Agreed. I think somehow we by osmosis made him a great baseball announcer. Well, I think when we started texting him, he then started focusing more on the broadcasters, and he learned through that. I, I would say that, you know, the rela- isn't everything about relationships. No, isn't everything. It is all about relationships. <laughs> hey, uh, you're calling college football. College football is getting started. Somebody asked me to ask you. You can do in the Chai Sox. Uh, are you doing any college foots before the Chai Sox is over? Yeah, so I'm doing a I'm doing a game every week, and I'll, you know I've been missing a couple games a week for for Peacock. So that'll Peacock's over on uh, next Saturday on September fourth. So instead of missing games for that, I'll miss a couple for college football. And then, if, you know, if the Sox have a clincher or a big game, you know, right right at the end where they have a chance to finish off the division, I'll obviously be doing that. Uh, but I'm, a, I'm doing most of September. I'm just taking off for uh, college football Friday and Saturday. What's your first game? Do you know? Yeah, we got uh, – it's actually in a couple days. It's on Saturday. Uh, we got Nebraska-Northwestern mm. in the opener. Mm. I'm calling for a big Nebraska year. You can't lose close games game after game after game. I agree. I agree. And that's why, if I'm them, I'd much rather have a non-conference game first. Yes. Agreed. Because if you're coming off that and you just want a confidence builder, like, or, you know, say you come off of that year where you win one conference game and you're net with zero, right? You lost all those close games. I, I'd just rather play Alabama in the opener if I'm going to do something rather than a league team. Because if for some reason you just have a bad day, just one bad day, right? And it, and it doesn't mean you're going to have 11 bad days for the year. But if you have one bad day, you go on one in the league. Everybody's doing the here we go again thing, and that seeps into the water. Totally agree. Oh, my God. The great Ricky Bird song said it best. Look, nobody here at Northwestern thinks they can win at anything. Nothing. Play tiddlywinks. Can't win. Whatever. Can't win. I'm telling you, the greatness that well, was Rick- the magic of what Fitz has done. The Fitz, Fitz is 109 Great. and 90 as a football coach. There, I, you know, uh, Gary Barnett brought them to the Rose Bowl in the mid 90s, and Fitz has ended up building on that. You know, Randy Walker obviously was beloved there as well, uh, but Fitz, Fitz has done a lot of good, and they've won a couple division titles in the last four years. But man. You know, they didn't have any business come 1995 winning anything in the Big Ten, and now they're always around. I I think it's honestly one of the best coaching jobs in college football to build anything relating to something that looks like a dynasty at Northwestern. I agree. Yeah, I I mean, I'm not even saying it's a dynasty. The only thing I'm saying is he's just he's done really well, and he has Northwestern as a legitimate. 
uh, team. Like, you know, if they get to hear that's it. That's what I mean by, yeah. that's what I yeah. mean by dynasty. Yeah. Like family, there's a name on it, right? There's a family name, Fitz's name, and then Northwestern has become a competitive yes. team in college football basically every year. And they had enough in terms of donor support to build that new facility on the lake, which is ridiculous. I mean, I got a tour of that thing a couple of years ago. It's ridiculous. And to think that, it, to think that in you know 1990, if somebody said, "Hey, Northwestern's going to have this huge facility and be a competitive college football team," I think even some alums would be like, "Puh, what are you talking about?" I think all alums would be like, "Puh, what are you talking about?" I, I, I you know, and all of a sudden, it's right on the lake, right? You look out, and there's the ocean. Yeah, I, I just like that we are such good friends that you can recreate the sounds I make. <laughs> you just you just redid the tuh. yeah like 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 when Larry David asked if the waiter uh, <laughs> had the chef make a sound when he wanted to substitute something. <laughs> yes, at the country club. Yes, yeah. yeah did before the sound, did he go? Puh. <laughs> was that before or after the waitress sweated all over him? And was that before or after the waitress had diarrhea and served him their lunch? Oh, oh, oh. The sweat thing, the slow bead of sweat oh, into God. the soup is a oh, problem. Oh, I, I actually, I don't get grossed out by much, as you know, but that got me a little bit. Not that um, eight days from now is the big one. Are you calling the Penn State Fox game or a Penn State Purdue game by any chance? I'm not. I'm Damn not. We have, uh, we have Oklahoma next week. Right. Uh, we, but no, yeah, yeah, we're not. Right. Because I am. I am leading the charge and have been all summer for Aiden O'Connell for Heisman Trophy, and it starts next week, 8, eight o'clock on Fox, and I can't wait. I'm not going to lie to you. I can't wait. I feel invested. I do. Thursday night, baby. Well, look, Jeff, Jeff Brom is the type of guy who can call plays for a Heisman quarterback. Right. Like that offense is made to make Heisman numbers. Yes. Did I lose you? Oh, that's all I had to say. Oh, that's it. Oh, okay. I'm a little surprised you're not calling the Bowling Green. Uh, let's see. The Bowling Green UCLA game. I didn't realize that Bowling Green had the kind of budget to head out to UCLA and play that. That's a, all right. Okay, BG. I see you. Indiana, Illinois. Uh, you know what the problem with playing a conference game is? And we did that at Bowling Green for a while, and I was lucky. We always won the November or December, early December conference game. Be- because no matter how bad, like say you got it, like I had one time go to Michigan, then we got on a plane and we went to number one in the country, Alabama, you know, that kind of schedule. But we always had in our back pocket, we were number one in the league. Being 0-1 in the league and then going to play Buffalo, if you're Indiana or whoever, is miserable. Miserable. Yeah. Right? Because you're always hanging on yeah. that 0-1. I uh, there were when I was in the Big South when I was doing high point basketball games and we started to in that league play two December games. You get either two home games or two road games. The coaches who had two road December league games were like, guys, no, we just played at Dayton and we just played at Minnesota and we just played at whoever else. Right. We, we played at Auburn and we played. Uh, a game at Towson and lost that. You go zero and seven, and then you go zero and two in those league games. Everybody thinks the season's over. The coaches who would get the two home games in December, they'd be like, "All right, here we go. <laughs> right. We got a really good season coming up." Like right. it, it's ridiculous how fragile the psychology of all of it is, too. And honestly, of people covering teams as well. You know, if you're two and zero in the league, the people that are the beat writers following you are like, yeah, you know, they did lose by thirty to Maryland, but man, they're two and zero in the right. league. There's something good coming. Like you might have just beaten two totally garbage teams in your league, but that psychology is real for players too. I mean, sports psychology is played right on the margin, like on the edge of the cliff at all times. Totally. I, oh my God. I mean, you see it. Like, all right, uh, people are asking, can the Guardians hang in there, and what are the White Sox right now? Oh, my gosh. I I love that question weekly because you're like, <laughs> I, you know, it was something three days ago, and now it's something else. I mean, we had another one-two intentional walk, which, you know, I don't, I don't know. And then we, uh, you know, last night, bases loaded, two out, eighth inning, 
And this dude, the closer for the Orioles, comes in. His name is Felix Bautista. He's like 6'8", 260. He was all over the place. He hit Aloy Jimenez in the elbow at 102 miles an hour. Mm. And then he got a Brayu to 3-2 and two with the bases loaded and struck him out on a fastball above the zone. But, like, the Sox have played about 46% of their games this year decided by one or two runs. And that will drive you bonkers. Because just when you think you know what this team is, then they either scratch out a couple wins in a row or they lose five of six. I mean, we're in a stretch right now. The Sox are six and five in their last 11, and that includes a five-game winning streak. Right. Like, wait, what is that? And you still don't know what it is. But I will say there are two things that are scary for me right now. It's that the time is dwindling, first of all, and Cleveland's up four games. Second of all, tiebreakers are in effect this year. They're not going to play game 163 in a tie. So essentially, with the Sox having lost uh, eight of, I think it's their, their nine and, they're six and nine against Cleveland this year. If you don't win the next four against Cleveland, you lose the tiebreaker. And so you're not four games back. You're five games back right now. Yeah. And that scares me because at some point time does run low. I mean, right now with 39 games left, the best they can do is 101 and 61. And if you go 20 and 19, that puts you 82 and 80, and that's not going to win you a division. If you go 23 and 16, that puts you at 85 and 77. And that's probably not going to win you a division either. And so this team that's played 500 for the bulk of the season can no longer play 500. Like, you're able to do that for a long time. Right now they feel like a two-seed in the NCAA tournament that's up three with eight minutes left. And then the other team goes on a 4-0 run, and you're like, wait a second. Our chance to blow them out is gone. And when you get when you lose your chance to blow that team out, that's the only thing you have. You put yourself in a coin flip against a team you probably shouldn't have, and that's all bets are off at that point. You know what I love? I'm gonna go back to something. You know what I absolutely loved? And I'm gonna go back to the one and two again, LaRusa. And it ended up working out as Tony LaRusa told everybody. But I love and I played this on my morning show. I love how you and Stoney um you, you, you talk about it, and it's like you're so hard trying not to laugh or expound more on it. Does that make sense? It's like you're sitting there going, oh, what the hell are we doing? But you're not. And I feel like I can tell. You're not giving me. You're like, oh, what a ridiculous, what a frick are we doing, blah, 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 blah. It's awesome to hear the inflection in your voice. Well, here's what I'll say to that. What do you say? Uh, you know me. You know me too well. <laughs> and then number two is funny how words change definition based on the tone you use when you're conveying them. You can say a word that has one meaning, but then you say it another way, and that word changes meaning as long as the person's listening. Closely. Yes. And you know, the next day build it as a graphic because I felt like it was piling on, but I just wanted to know for my own sensibility, the two strike slugging percentage in major league baseball, not batting average slugging percentage, the two strike slugging percentage in major league baseball is two sixty six this year slugging percentage. Mm, that so ain't great. Sixty six batting average. Yeah. Two sixty six batting average is like, uh, okay. Like maybe you don't want to pitch when, you're at two strikes this year. Your slugging is 266. And I know they had runners at second and third, and that's his whole point. But, like, also in this day and age, you playing for one run is it's, it's a little passe. And, and so, you know, as I watch it unfolding, I know what the response is going to be, and I know there's going to be defiance post-game. But I also know enough about probability to know – decision I personally would make. No, I got you. No, I mean, and that's a great way of saying it uh, as opposed to saying, hey, what the are we doing? That's it. That's it. 
Yeah, it's not like if you're sitting at a table and playing blackjack with somebody who's not playing by the numbers, you can get mad all you want. But, like, at some point it just – sorry. Right. You know, right. I mean, you're, yeah. not gonna change, yeah. you're not going to change how that person plays, right? Like, you can only take the cards that you want to take, and you know they're going to mess up the shoe. But, like, you can either get up, you can laugh, or you can get mad. But getting mad is going to make them dig in. That's just the way life is. And and it's a waste of my negative energy. Yes. So, like, I, I just, I don't really, there's nothing that's going to do. That's no. Good. No, I totally get it. No, I mean, there's nothing, you know, he's made the decision and all. But I do love listening to it. It's so good. It is so freaking good. <laughs> it is. I'm sorry. Yeah, it is. Where are Where are you going to be for the Dublin game? So we're doing it from a studio, uh, a Fox studio. I, I would have loved to go yeah. And you know how I feel about doing games from elsewhere. But I will say, you know, not having to miss a whole handful of Sox games. Uh, the, the fact that I have been able to go to a game in Dublin in the first place is a pretty awesome deal. Six years ago, we had BC Georgia Tech out there, and I got to go to a an Irish soccer match against Oman. Did I, ever, did I mention that? No. Yet? No. Oh, yeah, it was an Irish soccer match. It was Robbie Keane's last match, like the Irish national hero. It was his last match, and people were, like, crying in the crowd. But it was Ireland against Oman. And you know how sometimes you watch, like, the Sacramento Kings play at the Grizzlies, and you're like, wow, the Kings didn't travel that well to Memphis. Uh, Oman didn't travel that well to Ireland. They had a pocket of, like, 30 people. And they were a hearty 30 people, but they got their doors blown off. Uh, Robbie Keane in Ireland and it was just it was really interesting to watch Irish soccer fans see a legend go away because this was like a seminal moment in their history and here I am just like a dumb American watching soccer like I do when the World Cup shows up and people were like bawling. Wow. Who was the game? Uh, Boston College Georgia Tech. Huh. Interesting because you are not a rainy and wet you're, yeah, what, is that a kind of a soccer match that you can get shanked at or shivved or anything? Oh no, they're happy. Oh, are they? That's like, a, that's like right. happy as a clam. Like everybody's just drinking and having fun, and like everybody's got scarves on. It's like it's Christmas. Oh, all right. Like Ted Lasso. Yeah, I want to go to. Uh, I want to go to a game where it's so intense that somebody might shoot us with a, uh, you know, like a bottle rocket or something. You know what I mean? actually want that, or is that a sentence you just made no, and no. you wanted to see what it sounded like? No, I've said this forever to my wife. I've, I've, I know where to go. There's one in Tel Aviv. Um, I've told Lee forever. I either want to go to there or Red Star game basketball game in Belgrade where they throw stuff at the coaches. They throw hot batteries and stuff. I've always wanted to go to that kind of intensity. Not every day, but once in a while. What? <laughs> that is like that is a great insight into your personality. Like let me go let me go to the sporting event where they throw hot batteries. <laughs> How do they do that? How do they do hot batteries? I don't know, but I know this. Uh who's the guy? Gosh darn he's a longtime NBA scout. On my other phone I had it. He sent me they light them. They light batteries. They bring lighters. You smoke in these. They bring lighters. They heat them up, and they fire them at the coach. Hot quarters, hot pennies, hot batteries. Uh, inside is firework. It's in. Uh, it's Red Star. It's called in Belgrade. It's insane. And I, I just like. I mean, I'm not going to participate. I'm going to be cowering in the corner. But I want to go. I've always wanted to go to a soccer match, and this goes back to you know, what are they called? The skinheads or whatever. I don't know, but. I always wanted to go. I always wanted to go to see that kind of intensity. You want hooligans in your life. Not <laughs> See, that's the wrong way to look at it. But uh, I want to see some hooliganism while I'm there. Let's put it yeah. that way, right? <laughs> you, you, uh, what you're describing, though, is uh, when you want to cower in the corner while it's happening... You want to go to the Hooliganism Museum. <laughs> That's probably That's better. You want. Yeah. You want to have a season pass to the Hooliganism Museum. Maybe ultimately that's what I want to do. Or maybe I want to find that video and send it to you and act cool and say this is where I want to go. You know what I mean? Yeah, I want to see I mean, this. Oh, look. look. 
I got admission to the 1245 hot battery <laughs> yeah. going. I just pulled up a picture of it. There's all kind of like flames going on in the in the crowd here. But yeah, I've always wanted. When you said you could smoke there, when you said you could smoke there, you made me think of the old Rosemont Horizon for DePaul game when they'd have like a curtain behind the, the top row of the first <laughs> deck where you could go and smoke while like Bobby Brannon and Cincinnati were playing against uh, Cliff Clink Scales in DePaul. Like that's, I, I remember going as a kid and my dad and I were walking on a concourse and I'm like, what's that? And he's like, ah, oh, it's where you can smoke. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? Really? <laughs> I got two things with that. One, the old Chicago Stadium, our Little League coach used to take us. We used to sit in the top and you could smoke, and by the end of the game, we were about ready to die of asphyxiation because it all rose up. Uh, And how about this? Is this still happening in public schools? My father was a principal at Calumet High School in Gary, and he had for the high school a smoker's lounge. Do they still do that? They don't do a smoker's lounge in most <laughs> high schools. They don't? What, do they have slot machines there, too? <laughs> but my dad was very health conscious. He got rid of the vending machine and put in an apple machine because he felt it was healthier. One of those guys that took out, like, the baby roots and the Twixes and put in a fruit machine? <laughs> he did. He put in apples in there, best apples I've ever had. But there was a smoking lounge at Calumet High School. True story. Did they have a three-card poker table? <laughs> they- Caribbean stud was the game up in Northwest Indiana. So they, they did it. You walk in, first thing you hear is insurance is open. <laughs> they taught you classes. They do. They, t- they taught you classes and how to deal. You know, hey, how to be a dealer, how to deal, hold them. You want to deal blackjack? Here, take a shop class. We'll teach it to you. <sighs> Hey, hey, what's that over there? Is that the uh, is that the uh, the vice for shopping? No, that's the uh, auto shop. <laughs> right, I'm telling you, best apples ever, though. Like it's still, it's really good. It is really good. What was good about them? I don't know. They were red and they were awesome. I'm not kidding you. Now I was not exactly fruit guy, and I learned because we would get them and we would take them into the the JV gym and it was dusty so you had uh, we ate I ate the entire apple that's how I learned I've showed you that before I ate literally the entire apple and that's where I learned to do it cuz you couldn't put your apple on the ground and go play cuz it was too dirty the floor that's right. You ate dusty apples like a grizzly bear. No, that's, that's I didn't. No, like. I. you listened poorly. I did not eat the dusty apples. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, here's what I'm saying. When you go into that place, you think the only dust is on the floor? If you think the smoke uh, rises in Chicago Stadium, <laughs> you, had a, you had a cloudy apple for sure. I was eating. You held it in your hand. You know, they say natural immunity comes when little kids eat dirt. Right? Isn't that what they say? That's what I always heard. Kids need to play more. That's what they said to you when you wouldn't <laughs> stop eating dirt. And they said, well, how can we make this into a positive? Hey, I was hungry, pal. To hell. I was hungry. You know. Well, where are you at today? Fox Sports 1 has your game. Where are you at? We, uh, we're in Baltimore. Oh, yeah? Uh, we're in Baltimore. Sox and O's. They, uh, they moved the left field wall like 26 Stupid. Back. Stupid. It's a beautiful park, and it still is. It's a great ballpark. It just looks strange. And the, the Sox hit two balls. One was 402, and one was 405, and they were both doubles. I saw that. What? All right. All right. Hey, uh, are you doing the game? It's one of those dual feeds side oh, by side. Okay. They're doing the game, and we're doing the game. Oh, all right. Have a great broadcast, yeah. my friend. Thanks. Thank you, buddy. Eat your dirty <laughs> apples. Enjoy your day. <laughs> See ya. That's the great Jason Bonetti. Hey, we got big time Colts news when we come back. Wow, look at this. We'll be right back. Here's what's happening with the fan. Things are heating up at Colts camp and we'll be live from Grand Park Tuesday through Thursday this week, giving you up-to-the-minute reports, stories, and interviews. For more information about when you can hear all your favorite shows, head to 1075thefan.com. And remember to follow The Fan on social media. The Fan is on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Like and follow The Fan for updates and contest opportunities on all things sports. For more info, click on 1075thefan.com. Dan Doggett's here for Hubler Chevrolet. They are my dealer and Brooke and John are my friends. Car shopping, service, maintenance, just parts. Go to Hubler. 
They'll find, you will find, fair pricing, great service, family values when you do visit Hubler Chevrolet. Five Chevy locations, Franklin, Shelbyville, Rushville, Bedford, US 31 South, right here in Naptown. Hubler has a store near you. Click drivehublerchevy.com. Learn more. See why Hoosiers have trusted Hubler for 60 years. New inventory daily it comes in. It sells fast due to their size. Hubler has more inventory than any other dealer. That's why it's always your place to go. Remember, the only dealer to include a 10-year, 200,000-mile limited warranty for peace of mind driving is Hubler Chevrolet. Hubler family is looking out for your family. Maybe you need a quality used vehicle. Hubler has hundreds and all Q-certified vehicles include a 2-year, 100,000-mile limited warranty. Click drivehublerchevy.com. If you go, tell them I sent you. The ultimate end of summer party is coming. All in Music Festival Labor Day Weekend 2022, September 3rd and 4th at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. Featuring great music, great food and lifestyle with performances by Daryl Hall and John Oates, Cage the Elephant, John Fogarty, Portugal the Man, plus Lucinda Williams, Trampled by Turtles, The Four Tops, and many more. Multiple stages, multiple days. All in Music Festival Labor Day Weekend 2022. Get details and tickets now at allinfestival.com. This is for the men who never settle. The ones who believe only quitters and a game and a tie. The type of guys who choose the bar with the biggest TVs to overcompensate for theirs at home. This is the Lodge mentality. This is Twin Peaks. No one does happy hour like Twin Peaks. Whatever your preference, they have everything from tequila cocktails and an extensive bourbon category to top shelf spirits and cocktails served over ice balls. And don't forget about their 29 degree man sized drafts. Twin Peaks. Eats, drinks, scenic views. Everyone here knows Diamonds Direct. Direct is the place to go for the best diamonds at the best prices. But did you know that savvy buyers from all over America, even Los Angeles and New York, now come here to buy their diamonds? These high-end shoppers have discovered that Diamonds Direct has one of America's best selections of large, rare diamonds, from 3 carats to 20 carats, all certified by the GIA, the most reputable and most trusted gem lab in the world. Because of Diamonds Direct's international connections and tremendous buying power, we're one of only a handful of jewelry stores in America that is able to offer a large selection of rare and precious GIA diamonds. In fact, Diamonds Direct's multi-million dollar selection includes a stunning array of high-end Riviera necklaces, 20-carat tennis bracelets, and an extraordinary collection of rare, precious gemstones, rubies, sapphires, emeralds, and even the really hard-to-find fancy yellow diamonds. Come see why Diamonds Direct right here is the destination for high-end shoppers all over America. Extraordinary selection, quality, and unmatched value. Diamonds Direct. Your love, our passion. DiamondsDirect.com. Denny Smith here for Sundown Gardens. Sundown has a large selection of container and bald and burlap trees in stock, and they're 30% off through September 4th. Now's a great time to plant before we get late into the fall season. Find that perfect shade tree you always wanted or a wonderful ornamental tree to finish off your landscape beds. Follow Sundown Gardens on Facebook and Instagram. Lots of fall funds coming to Sundown Gardens in the next few months. Sundown Gardens at 186th Street and Springville Road, sundowngardens.com. Volunteers make Indy a better place to live. If you know one who relies on their car, they can get a year's worth of free vehicle maintenance. Nominate them at JiffyLubeIndiana.com. Before they break the streak of eight consecutive opening day losses, the Colts need to practice. What are we talking about? Practice, man. What are we talking about? Practice? Yeah. Practice. Recap practice. Follow the Colts' progress through camp with daily in-depth updates from Kevin Bowen. It's been pretty uneventful. At 1075thefan.com. Making sure we have enough depth. Your home for complete Colts coverage. Who are we as a team? Is 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. It's the Dan Dockett Show, 93.5 and 107.5, The Fan. Colts announced today they are signing Matt Hack. Matt Hack is a punter. He played at Arizona. He's been in the NFL last year with the Bills, year before that, or four years before that, from 2017 to 2020. He was with the Dolphins. Second team all Pac-12. He's punted 357 times, an average punt of 46 yards, 131 of them inside the 20. He has passed for a touchdown, average punt 44.7. There you go. 
All right. Last year, net punting was 39 yards. Uh, Regular punting, I guess, is 44. Career high of 45 yards in 2019. So it looks like the Colts in 17 games this guy played last year. looks like they got him a punter. looks like they got him a professional punter. And they also, uh, I think he's also a holder. And I think he's also a, uh, I don't know if he's a kickoff guy or not, but Matt Hack is your new guy. As word first crept out on our show yesterday, we had some folks that were very nice. They came over after, like a lot of you did, and said hello. And I appreciate that very much. Yeah. Uh, Dan, can I get a shout out to my stepbrother, Josh Whitson, who listens to you all the time? His second daughter was born this morning. Jimmy, let's go, man. Give it to me. Congratulations. You know, really, really, really proud. proud. There you go. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Quitty Pay has been a little bit banged up. Uh, he's got an ankle. Guys are saying he shouldn't have practiced. I mean, I get it. That's fine. There's a little difference, but I understand. Guys come on to YouTube chat just to say stupid things. Rigoberto Sanchez, he is out. And you know what? No, uh, that's too bad. But they got themselves a new punter, and I think all will be well. I think. I mean, what the hell do I know? I mean, you know. But one of the things that I do know is this. I do know that uh, the Colts will survive and all will be fine. However, one of the things that has happened in camp now late is guys are getting a little dinged up. We mentioned Quiddy Pay. Quiddy Pay went down. Um, No word yet on what is bad. Look, yesterday running sprints, you had a guy go down. Today... Quitty Pay goes down. Uh, one thing I always thought of as a freaking coach, man, be careful. Chet Holmgren, the second round pick, was kind of obnoxious. I, I don't like him. I don't know why I don't like him. I don't like him. Look, you guys like him. I don't like him. Never met him, never talked to him, watched him, don't like him. Exam show Chet Holmgren has torn ligaments in his foot. A timetable is to be determined. He was playing, he went up and. Uh, got after LeBron in some kind of game they were playing in, and he challenged LeBron at the rim. It was pretty good play. And next thing you know, Holmgren has himself torn ligaments in his foot. So that's not great for him, but the truth of the matter is uh, he'll have a long career. Happy birthday, Reggie Miller, 57 years old. Reginald Miller, a Hall of Famer. Obviously, one of the most beloved Indiana Pacers, 57 years old, Reggie Miller. Uh, There you go. Dan, I used to have a smoke with the priest, vice principal, prior to getting the wax from a paddle in Catholic school. I never got the wax. Never got them. Uh, Despite being vaccinated 72 times, Jill Biden has tested positive once again for the vid. Hey, Dan, I thought you were going to be out of Colts camp today. I was, but James, I got, I got natted out. I did. I got natted out, man. I'm sorry. I did. The Nats came, and I went away. I did. Mm-hmm. That's it. The Nats came, and I said, nay, nay. No, no, no. Goodbye. Adios. Hasta la vista. I ain't sitting out there among gnats. Not doing it. Not sitting out there. I will not do that among the gnats. So there you go. Uh, Holmgren, by the way, for you gamblers, this is why you don't make any bets like this until you get close to the season. Holmgren was plus 350 to win rookie of the year. Uh, You don't make bets like that, and you don't make bets on the Colts. You don't make bets on, on season bets until, unless you think you got a really good number, and, uh, you know, if you got a really good number, then you take it on a season long bet. But I'm I'm telling you on things like that, you gotta wait. Players are not, I don't know. Players are playing in too many things. They're being stupid. You know, the cool thing now is to go play in some type of summer league so you're down with the neighborhood. I get all that. That's fine, but man, you better take care of yourself. Better take care of your body, particularly when you're a rookie. And you're trying to play a little bit, and then you're trying to get that next contract, which is a big one. 
Take care of yourself early, baby. Early. Uh, Dan, oh, I get it. There you go. Uh, I said earlier that can confirm with sources Rigoberto Sanchez has torn his Achilles. An injury to Sanchez was first reported on the Dan Dockett Show yesterday morning. Or yesterday afternoon, some guy said all seven people were informed then. Yay! People are clever. Nah, man, you are welcome. A lot of people are tweeting me today. There have been a lot of things uh, written that are nice. The local dying newspaper will never print them, and they're not invited. But we are very excited about our bikes program. I did write an article about turning 60. I wish they would put it on the 107.5 website here. I don't know if they can, but it's on my Twitter. Maybe I'll pin it up there. Uh, and thank you all for the love. Yeah, seriously. Thank you all for the love of it. Um, I'm proud of it. I turned 60. I learned about a lot of different things, being loved and loving and falling down and all these other things. And thanks to Kelsey Anderson, who is from, well, she's from here. She's from Fortville. She's on WRTV, at K Anderson underscore WRTV. She did a really nice piece on Lee and Mai's bikes program, and we very much appreciate it. Sad news about the fellas from Hagerstown. They got beat yesterday 10 to nothing, kind of fell apart. But, hey, what are you going to do, man? Those kids represented. They played great. They were fun to watch. They gave me must-see TV, and I'm very much appreciative of it. All right, when we come back, we got the race of the day. Jimmy's got some bets. It's hump day, baby. Let's make some money when we return. Discover Downtown Indy with Indiana Sports Corp's annual Indy Ultimate, Saturday, September 10th, starting and finishing at Monument Circle. Experience the best of downtown's venues and landmarks with this five-mile run walk. This year's brand new route includes Carroll Stadium, the state capitol, and favorites like Lucas Oil Stadium and Victory Field. The Jim Irsay Collection will be up in Lucas Oil Stadium with items used by some of the greatest artists in music history. Run with a friend or bring a group. Participants get an Adidas shirt, medal, and Indy 11 voucher to a future match. Register now at IndyUltimate.com. Here's what's happening with The Fan. Check out our contest page at 1075thefan.com weekly and enter to win prizes, tickets to sporting events, concerts, and more. Tune in for Friday Night Lights football. This week, Carmel travels to Center Grove. Brendan King with the call. Catch JMV at Friendly's Tavern in Zionsville this Thursday, August 25th from 3 to 6 for the 2022 Evan Williams Tavern Tour. Stop by for your chance to win a $50 gift card and pick up a Tavern Tour t-shirt. For more info, click on 1075thefan.com. The IRS is ramping up collection, and if you owe back taxes or have years of unfiled tax returns, listen carefully. Before it's too late, check your eligibility for the Fresh Start program still offered by the IRS to reduce or even eliminate your tax problems. Call our special hotline number now and find out in minutes if you qualify for these life-changing debt reduction programs. Business or personal, if you're in a payment plan with no end in sight, have unfiled tax returns under audit, have a wage or bank levy, or finally just want to know your options, Call the experts at Republic Tax Relief and stop collections immediately. A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau with a five-star rating from Yelp. This veteran-owned company has the fight you need to take on the IRS. Don't go at it alone. Call their hotline number now, 800-491-3318. That's 800-491-3318. Find out if you qualify today. Call 800-491-3318 or go to republictaxrelief.com. Hey, it's Jan V. And guys, if you've noticed a lack of energy, motivation, and drive, it could be Low T. Schedule your complete health assessment at Low T Center. They now offer the convenience of monitored self-inject at home testosterone treatments for just $155 a month, cash pay, or covered by most health insurance. If you don't live near a Low T Center or you just need the convenience of a home treatment, Low T Center makes it easy. Only your first two visits are in person. Go to LowTCenter.com now to book online. Low T Center, reinventing men's health. Care. Hey, every Monday through Thursday here on the Dan Dockett Show, Race of the Day, brought to you by Horseshoe Indianapolis Racing and Casino. To enter, go to mine or the 1075 The Fan Twitter account at Dan Dockage at 1075 The Fan. Retweet the tweet that goes out at 2 o'clock for your chance to win a VIP pack $50 for betting, $50 for dining to Horseshoe Indianapolis Racing and Casino. One horse in 10. Kevin Kirsch, you got that. Two scratch, pure tap. Ryan Masters, you got the three. Four is scratch. Five drop anchor, Ernest Knox, the old coach. Number six, Purse uh, Plemonston, Michael Duffy, you have the six. 
Mighty Contender, L. Rob the seven. Lamp Oil, Scott Stewart. You have the eight. Good luck. The following is presented by the Indiana Thoroughbred Breed Development Program. From Horseshoe Indianapolis Racing and Casino, it's time for the Thoroughbred Horse Race of the Day on 93.5 and 107.5 The Fan. Horseshoe Indianapolis, a heart-pounding destination. Running on Horseshoe Indianapolis and Lamp Oil. Quickly set a light there by Joe Ramos. Lamp Oil dashed to the front and angles in while clear of intend. To the first furlong, Pure Tap is running in third. Then on the outside, Plemonston. And father out is mighty contender, Jane Elliott, and the first favorite, Drop Banker, now makes progress in between horses as they head toward the far turn, where Lamp Oil has raced to a four-length lead heading toward the far turn from intend. Then comes Drop Banker running in third. Mighty Contender on the far outside. Three furlongs from home. Plemiston in between horses. And now Pure Tap Trails here in the Tuesday opener. The quarter for leader Lamp Oil. 23.28 smooth seconds coming toward the quarter pole. For Joe Ramos, it's Lamp Oil who leads in 10 by 4 coming for home. From Drop Banker, Pure Tap the rail. Wide is Mighty Contender and Plemonston. In between horses, Lamp Oil spins them in. Half mile in 46.92. They just swallowed up Lamp Oil. Here's in 10. And Pure Tap attacks with the rail. One for long to go. It's in 10. Pure Tap dropping back was Lamp Oil. Plemonston and on the outside drop banker but close to home it is intend and pure tap intend intend and pure tap photo finish Plymouth to third and drop banker finish fourth just minutes from indy off i-74 in shelbyville horseshoe indianapolis has live thoroughbred and quarter horse racing through november 23rd thanks in part to the indiana thoroughbred breed development program and keep listening for your chance to win with horseshoe indianapolis's thoroughbred race of the day on 93.5 and 107.5 the fan with nearly 6,000 Napa Auto Parts stores and over 17,000 Napa Auto Care centers, Napa is the fuel that helps drivers like you get up and go. The Colts close out the preseason by hosting the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Coverage Saturday at 4.30 on 93.5 and 107.5 The Fan. Show on 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Hey, Kevin Kirsch, winner of today's race of the day, brought to you by Horseshoe Indianapolis Racing and Casino. Be sure to tune in Monday through Thursday for your chance at a VIP prize pack for $50 in betting and $50 in dining at Horseshoe Indianapolis Racing and Casino. The one horse in 10 paid $7.440 and $3. Pure Tap paid $11. Nice. Eleven forty and five dollars, and the uh, six horse Plemonston paid three twenty to show fifty dollar and eighty cent on a two dollar exact. A fifty cent try page of thirty three fifty. Let's go, Jimmy Yankees! The J Cook plays of the day. This is me. All right, I'm not a f- athlete. This is my f- way. This is how I win. Today's plays of the day on the baseball diamonds. Taking the Toronto Blue Jays from the money line. They're in Boston against the Red Sox. Also going to take the Los Angeles Dodgers laying one and a half on the run line as they host the Milwaukee Brewers. Closing things out, taking Benetti's White Sox from the money line. They are in Baltimore. Camden Yards against the Orioles. Two and one yesterday, three and three on the week. 213, 271, four on the year. Plays on Twitter at the J. Cook. You're going bold because the White Sox are fighting for a playoff bid. And, ladies and gentlemen, only a game and a half out. That's where the beloved Orioles are. How about that? The Orioles, this is a week-old stat, so I don't know if it's still active or not, but as of, like, May 17th, they have the best record in the American League. Or in the American League East. Let me clarify that. But still, so that's a good you're bold taking that, right? Suppose so. Ryan Benetti sucks. I, I, he's right. They've played 500 ball for most of the year, and... <laughs> the deck collection at the door, and it's time to decide if they're well, going to make true. a push to the postseason or not. Boy, that that is really, really, really true. I mean, that is one of those deals where if you're not going to play, 
Uh, if you're not going to play now, when the hell are you going to play? Yankees back in business, Jimmy. Swept the Subway Woo! Series. Made two games set against the Mets. Offense looked good. Giancarlo Stanton still not back, but expected to rejoin the Yanks on their West Coast trip starting tomorrow. We're on the uptick. Yeah. And, you know, if you're going to win a division or you're going to win a game to get yourself back, Subway Series is that They one. said it was the largest crowd at New Yankee Stadium. Ever? Either yesterday or last yeah. night ever uh, for the Crosstown Rivals. Probably the best the Mets and Yankees have been at the same time in 15, mm-hmm. 20 years. Carol Hutchins, all-time leading winner in softball. 1,700 wins. 12 World Series. She won the program's first national championship in 2005, and I remember it. Hutch is a legend. Hutch is retiring. She, I believe, I don't think this is right. I, I don't know this. Maybe she is, maybe she isn't, but I... She might be the only coach that they had, and a really nice lady. She was terrific to Andrew. Actually, terrific to Lee and I when we were on a visit. We we, uh, spent some time with her. Lee knew her. In fact, she had recruited Lee to come. The other, the news, um, not great. Lenny Dawson, who led the Kansas City Chiefs to the Super Bowl, our Super Bowl win in Super Bowl IV, 87 years old. He passed away. Lenny Dawson was, man... 33 years as a broadcast analyst and 14 years as a quarterback. People knew him as the golden boy at Purdue. In fact, Todd, who is a Purdue legend, our producer, Todd Meyer, our executive producer, Todd Meyer, and our boss, uh, said that the golden girl at Purdue was started in response to the golden boy being Lenny Dawson. So Lenny Dawson, uh, who led Hank Stram, Gary Indiana's finest, to a Super Bowl win, uh, passed away. That's yeah, sad. Really nice guy. He was the Chiefs radio color analyst for 33 years, and he was a beloved figure in Kansas City, man. He was a guy that was on TV all the time. I mean, he was a guy that when he was playing, he would get done with practice and run and go do the evening news or the evening sports. That's how good Lenny Dawson was. He led the NCAA in passing efficiency. He played defense. He kicked. 1954 is one of the most memorable games for older-time Purdue fans. They beat Notre Dame. He had more than 3,000 yards passing when you obviously didn't pass. Steelers drafted him, found his niche with the Chiefs. Next thing you know, 28,000 yards, 240 touchdowns, all but basic, basically all with the Chiefs. So Lenny Dawson is... Uh, uh, an icon, actually. And I know a lot of Purdue fans that have been around, uh, you know, that are around Indy, uh, revere Lenny Dawson, as everybody should, because he was a terrific analyst. He was with NBC for a long time. He was a guy that was smooth, was cool. Inside, <clears throat> excuse me, inside the NFL on HBO was kind of his baby. Uh, yeah, and Mr. Insider says he was a very nice man as well. I I know, I, I met him, I think I think this is where I met him. I think it was at Ted Bishop's Phil Harris golf outing. I could be wrong. I do know I met Neil Armstrong there, and that was a big thrill. And Will, uh, Ernie Banks I met there. And that was a big thrill. All right, great day today. Thanks, everybody, that listened this morning and listened this afternoon. I know a lot of you guys on the YouTube chat do both tomorrow we're going to talk to the voice of the tampa bay buccaneers and we're going to see what in the heck is going on ladies and gentlemen what is going on with tom brady is he going to play is he going to show one last time here in lucas oil stadium we don't know we have absolutely no idea but uh hey it is what it is we'll find out tomorrow uh matt hawk has been Higher, he lost a punting competition in Buffalo to the dude that kicked it 82 yards. So he's played in 81 games. Colts got a vet. Good for the Colts. Talk to you tomorrow. John is next. Thanks, Jimmy. The Ride with JMV. Michael Pittman Jr., the Colts, joins us. So how will we see Naheem Hines use? More running back or wide receiver this year, Michael?